morning everyone how are you it's not 5 or 3 a.m it's half seven <laughs> which is a lot better for me <laughs> although the bags under my eyes don't necessarily show it but good morning everyone to today's chinese grand prix good to see you the usual faces in here at the start taco Warren, Rayleigh, Kataki, good morning, 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 morning. Um, Yvette, good to see you. Hey, Cobra. Oh, let's, uh, let's finish my coffee, eh? Let's finish my coffee. Oh, given. So, uh, Stuart, apologies if I mispronounced your name correctly. In Cambodia. Nice, nice. Morning, Sam. Good to see you, buddy. Coffee galore day. Coffee galore day. Yes. I also had another... I wanted to get to bed early last night, guys, so I was feeling nice and fresh. However, I went and saw a comedy show last night in London. And um, while well, the show was absolutely amazing, getting home from London was, um, yeah, long. And I didn't go to bed until around half one quarter. So, yeah, looking very alive. Well, yeah, <laughs> I've looked more alive, Warren. Look more alive. We'll talk predictions shortly. Hello, um, but yes, where am I from? I am just from outside London, in the UK. As you can probably tell from the lovely accent that I've got. Praying for an eventful race. Me too. Me too. Um, so I don't know if there's any rain forecast. It's not raining at the moment. It does look cloudy and overcast. But that was similar to how it looked yesterday. Um, now, unfortunately, guys, Pirelli, the, the admin at Pirelli is sleeping again. Because they haven't updated the tyre strategies for this weekend. Or the tyre allocations. So all I've heard thus far from Ted Kravitz via Sky Sports is that we have a two-stop today. That is the quickest. Um, that is the quickest solution. So we will see a two-stop race. Um, no one-stop races. Two stops are always more interesting. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully something will happen. Six hours of play. It wasn't even six hours, Daisy. Only even six hours. But yes, I just want to uh, start off this stream, guys, by saying thank you very much for getting the channel to 20,000 subscribers yesterday. Um, that is a huge milestone. We are over one fifth of the way to getting that uh, silver YouTube play button. Um, and to bring in this closer to, or you guys are, are bringing me closer to making this a full-time career. Um, so yeah, big, big thank you guys. And um, onwards and upwards, eh? Onwards and upwards. Uh, when's the race, Hunter? On the hour. It will start on the hour at 8 o'clock UK time. Uh, but wherever you are in the world, 27, just under 27 minutes from now, uh, the race will start. They've just made their way to the their pit boxes on the grid. Um, I do not have any live data to show you guys at the moment. So we'll wait for that to go live before we change scene. Um, if you're new here to this watch along. But if you are new here, welcome, welcome. Always welcome you newbies and um hopefully yeah you enjoy yourself as many others have been doing i mean this is the earliest that i've ever got to 100 viewers on a live stream um so yeah not even five minutes in guys so welcome all of you <coughs> they were saying the softs would do nine to 14 laps yeah well if it, if the sprint race is any indication that we saw yesterday we saw the medium compound tires really fall off um, it does seem to be cooler conditions again today compared to the uh, qualifying session that we saw. So maybe that will um, have a factor as well. But yeah, it's definitely going to be a two-stopper. I don't think a one-stop is even possible uh, with the high deck that we've got here. Race starts on the hour, guys. Race starts on the hour for those of you who are just joining in and wondering when it does. So you've got plenty of time to go grab yourself a nice cup of tea, a coffee, um, a beer, if it's uh, early or late, you know, even if it is early in the morning, why not crack open a beer um, and yeah, uh, plenty of time to, to make some food before the race starts, guys. 
Will I be in the Brad, Brad Pitt movie? Well, well, I mean, I know I've got the face for movies, but unfortunately, no, my, my invite as an extra got lost in the post. <laughs> I don't have a face for movies right now with these bags under these eyes, but it's, it's amazing what movie makeup can do for you. I'm sure they can Photoshop these out. <laughs> So no, Ed, we do not have live footage of the race. Um, unfortunately, that will cause my channel to get banned because that is breach of copyright. So we do have live data, the live timing uh, tower for you. We also have the track map as well. That's key um, so that you can visualize and for myself as well. Um, I don't like just having a timing tower, a track map so we can actually visualize what is happening on circuit and see where everyone is. Ah, the live timing sync is on live now. Bear with me, everyone. Jubbly, lovely jubbly. I do wish this would go live earlier, but so that I could get all set up rather than doing it right now. But hey ho, hey ho. Track map. Right, let's let's have a look. Let's see how that <clears throat> How is the missus? Sam, she is fast asleep right now, but I don't think she'll be fast asleep for long. She seems to have a sixth sense that she knows whenever I get up. Even though she doesn't actually wake up, she has a sixth sense that she knows that I've I'm out of bed and it wakes her up. So Whereas if I'm if I stay in bed and I just I don't know watch TV or go on my phone, she'll be able to sleep for hours. Oh, I actually just heard her. <laughs> right on cue, she's awake. <laughs> um, coffee here, seven thirty in the morning in Morocco. Nice, nice. Oh, are you on this? Are we on the same time in uh, as Morocco? Interesting. <clears throat> but right, guys, yes, so let's talk the grid from today. So thankfully for you Ferrari fans out there, particularly Carlos Sainz fans, he has maintained his position in P7. Um, if you don't, if you aren't aware, what happened yesterday post-race is that Aston Martin protested Ferrari, particularly Carlos Sainz, um, because they thought he was in breach of regulations and stopped out on circuit um, so they thought that because he brought out the red flag and he stopped out on circuit there is uh, there is a regulation that does state that he shouldn't have been able to have competed in qualifying so really he should have been disqualified or at least demoted to E15 um, which would have put him behind Lance Stroll and of course giving Fernando, Fernando, uh, Fernando Alonso much more of an opportunity to be able to um, secure a podium or at least a high points finish um, but that wasn't the case they ruled against that there's uh, they kind of had to elaborate on what stopped meant um, and the reasons behind the regulation and that got thrown out and Aston Martin accepted it so um, yeah Aston Martin trying there to help Fernando Alonso and even Lance Stroll as much as possible uh, so we do have no post-race penalties for um, today now, interestingly enough, it does seem that Lewis Hamilton is starting from his grid box today. He is not starting from the pit lane. So what that indicates is that he is continuing with the setup that he said was so bad, but cost him qualifying performance yesterday, um, and will be starting in 18th, which I'm surprised with. I thought he might have reverted back to his uh, to his setup that he had for the sprint race um or or another setup entirely and start from the pit lane what looks like logan sarchin is going to be doing um so yeah but if you're a lewis hamilton fan which uh, yep i am um no surprise it's going to be a tough day for, for lewis fans he needs something serious to go his way he needs a red flag where he's gained a number of positions he needs a safety car he needs rain primarily i don't know if we're going to get any 
Tram looks like a weird yoga pose. <laughs> Never really thought about it that way. Yeah. <laughs> morning, Graham. Morning, Mark. Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Good to see the familiars. 20 minutes. So yeah, let's have a, unfortunately, I would love to talk strategy with you guys. This is what we do prior to the race to discuss exactly um, what can occur in this race. But the only the only graphic I've got available to you because um, Pirelli's social media admin is sleeping right now by the looks of it, is this one. So let's have, let's show this one to you, which kind of, kind of indicates where the stresses on the tyres are in at this circuit. This is the only graphic that Pirelli have afforded us this week. Oh. There we go. Right. So you can see here it is very <coughs> it is very much a rear limited circuit there. So because of the slower corners that we have, it means that it takes more out of the rear tyres. We can see here that the front left really does take a battering as well because we also have a mixture of some real fast swooping corners. So you can see here sector two in particular and the last corner, um, I think that's turn 13 where they come out of the exit. So they're taking a lot out of their tires, trying to maximize their exit as much as possible from turn 11 and then swooping around this fast right hander onto the back straight but is very key. So you go from rear limited to then pushing so much pressure onto the front left. Um, so going to be key here. And, and we can see that we've got the C2, C3 and C4. So quite a soft. Once again, I think Pirelli have nailed, nailed the compound of tyres that we've got here. So that's not the hardest um, rate of compound that we can get uh, throughout the season so uh, C0 is the hardest and we're actually a couple of steps up from that so I like to see that I like to see that because then it enforce, enforces a two stop we have tyres that um, are going to degrade slightly more than um, what they usually do in, in previous times probably have been a bit too conservative with their tyre selection and with that um, it just can result in some very boring races but today um, strategy is definitely going to be a key factor. We'll see how much on-track overtaking we actually get. We did see in the sprint race that the DRS trains were forming yesterday and it was quite difficult to overtake. So I do expect there to be some undercuts. Uh, we need to keep an eye out on that, guys. Guys pitting out of traffic to try and get into some clean air on some fresh tyres to launch those who they were struggling to overtake ahead. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that. But unfortunately, we do not have the usual graphics of the tyre allocations or our remaining of each driver and what the preferred pit stop strategies are. All I know is that it is a minimum a two stop strategy today. So we could potentially maybe even see a three stopper. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the Pirelli admin is. He's he's obviously still sleeping. Um, this was the same at Australia as well. They were very late with doing it at Suzuka. So I'll keep refreshing. And if it comes through, I will keep you guys updated. Is this a Hamilton fan live stream? This is an F1 fan live stream. Why not have some memorabilia of Lewis Hamilton? While I am a fan of Lewis Hamilton, I'm not a diehard fan of Lewis Hamilton. I'm not a diehard fan of anyone. I do primarily support the Brits because, shock, I'm British and... Um, like most people, support their countrymen. So, yeah, uh, so be it. But I'm not fully British bias. Ultimately, I want to see fair racing and close racing. That's what I want. Um, so, yeah, um, I do I do have a soft spot for McLaren uh, because I grew up watching McLaren. Uh, actually, my most favorite driver growing up was Mika Hakkinen, a Finn. So, yeah. Got away from home not too long ago, so really hope I don't regret staying up and seeing an entertaining race tonight. I think it'll be an inter entertaining race. I think, look, prediction-wise, unless something dramatic happens with Max Verstappen getting some damage down into turn one, this he is all 10% chance of rain. Can we just add an extra zero on that? Can we just add an extra zero on that 10% chance of rain? Because that would be great. <laughs> Um, 
a, a minimal chance is better than no chance, isn't it? But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Don't think the tie deck will worry Red Bull. No, no. So yeah, going back to Max Verstappen. Barring something happening down into the first corner, if he gets ahead with no issue whatsoever, he's just going to breeze through this race. He pulled out a 15-second lead on Lewis Hamilton yesterday in a sprint race after starting fourth. Um, that car just clearly indicated it had no deck. He was half a second quicker than Lando. I mean, it's just, it's just so, so good around this track, and it just does not have any deck, so he can go faster in the fastest car but longer than everyone else as well. It's not even like, okay, well, their tires degrade at the same rate as everyone else on the grid. Oh, no, 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 no. He, he can just keep going faster and faster and faster and faster because their tires do not degrade. So, but yeah, we'll see. Morning next, good see ya. Yeah, rain will be perfect. That's what we need. We saw obviously the chaos in the sprint shootouts on Friday. So, yeah, but... As I said, we need to get everyone needs to get outside and they need to start doing their rain dances, but not for your own country, for particularly the Shanghai circuit. <laughs> yeah, we've already discussed it, it, it will be max, but close. The battle behind will be very close, um, as it has been pretty much throughout last year in this season. Um, hopefully, it's not a boring one two for Red Bull again. For the fourth time this season there's only one race where they haven't secured a one-two and that is australia um so yeah but fernando alonso are we going to see a punchy fernando alonso today i think we are of course he was a little bit hurt after what happened in the sprint race on saturday uh yesterday so yeah hopefully uh fernando alonso provides us some some good drama and well those ferrari boys there's no love lost between them at the moment. I was predict I was wondering, I was wondering when Leclerc and Sainz would boil over a bit because Sainz has no obligation to show be nice to Leclerc. Leclerc is the one they've decided to keep on and Sainz is the one they've decided to show the door. So Sainz should just while he was over the limit with his move down into the hairpin, <coughs> he shouldn't be like why should he listen to team orders? Why should he play it fair with Charles Leclerc? Try and get under his skin. Right. So they've been nicey nicey for such a long time. Need some drama in F1. We need it to be provided elsewhere if it's not going to happen at the front. <laughs> Sergeant's going to win. <laughs> in some warped reality, if you if 20th was first and first is last, then possibly. But um. Even in that what reality, I don't think Logan Sargent would win this race. But yeah, morning, Graham. Yeah, I'm very good. I'm very good. So I'm just finishing my coffee here. So that is my caffeine buzz. Maybe actually, this this will be a true test. If 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 my number one supporter, my partner, my missus. If she is awake, if she is watching the stream and she is supporting, could I get another coffee? Could he please? Let's see if that works, guys. Let's see if that works. Because <laughs> my setup, I'm in a different room. I don't know if she's awake. I don't know if she's in another room. So. <laughs> I think she's awake. Uh, starts in port for McLaren. If one of them can get in front of Alonso, then there's a chance of them holding off Ferrari. Most definitely, yes, because McLaren do have some good pace. Key, key race here today, for guys, for you Oscar Piastri fans. So one of Oscar Piastri's weaknesses is that his um, tyre management hasn't been great last season. And that kind of reared its head again uh, in Suzuka. So today, with a very high um, deg race, we need to keep an eye out on him. And he needs to really focus on tyre management today, more so than probably his outright pace. Because otherwise, he's just going to get through them. Um, so yeah, let's see. Let's see how he gets on. Um, so it's a key key race for Oscar Piastri today, because that's where definitely where Norris has the better of Piastri at this moment in time. Aston Martin, uh, Charles will be on fire today. Yeah, I think so. I think the Ferrari boys could provide us some fireworks. I think they could. Danny Ricardo as well, guys. Danny Ricardo, you Daniel Ricardo fans out there, it's been a good weekend for him thus far. Uh, 
in contrast to Suzuki Sonoda, who's having a shocking one. Um, but of course, he's had a very good start to the season. But Danny Ricardo, pressure is on. All the talk about his seat is already under threat due to his performances in the first four races this season. Uh, starting P12, had a good result in the sprint shootout, had a good result in the sprint race. Good qualifying yesterday, of course, being into P12. Um, so <clears throat> he'll be looking at fighting for that last points position. Um, if you like to think that Lewis won't be making his way up into the top 10. Um, and with Nico Hülkenberg, Bottas, Stroll there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an opportunity for Danny Ricciardo to, to make a statement today to all of his doubters. What do I think about the 2025 Red Bull seats? Um, I still think it's Perez. I mean... We know that everyone's memories are very short in F1, so you're only ever as good as your last race. But thus far, Perez is doing exactly what Red Bull want of him. I don't know why Red Bull would probably bring... Unless they think Max is potentially going to move in 2026. Um, and there's something happening behind the scenes that we don't know. Of course, we've already heard the rumours of Mercedes and Max being uh, whispered. Uh, but I don't know why you would bring it... I love Carlos Sainz and I think Carlos Sainz deserves a top seat and I would love to see him in that Red Bull seat alongside Max. However, if you are the management of Red Bull, I just don't know why you would upset the apple cart and bring in someone who you think can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Max in equal machinery. Perez quite clearly can't. He's playing the role of, they have such a car advantage at the moment, he's playing the perfect role. Um, as a number two driver for what they wanted him to do when he first joined. So if he keeps doing what he's doing, Perez, I don't see why they would get rid of him for that. The only way they'd get bringing Carlos Sainz is if they think he's a future number one driver and they think Max might leave, as the rumours suggest, when the new regulations come around. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But that's my thinking. So why did I start watching F1? I Why and when I started watching F1 was when I was a, a kid. Um, a long time ago now, um, as I'm 32, I know I don't look it, guys. I know. I know a number of you have just fallen backwards off your chairs after finding out that I'm 32. I may look 32 this morning, actually, with the lack of sleep. But um, <laughs> we, I, I got into it because my granddad, my granddad actually used to be a racing driver. Um, was never at a high level. Was never at a very high level. He was like, just raced around like the UK back in the 60s. Um but yeah, he uh, he got me into it. I remember watching yeah, the battles of Kimi Raikkonen and... Uh, Kimi Raikkonen? Sorry, that's a bit later. In, um, Mika Hakkinen and... Uh, Mika Hakkinen and, and Michael Schumacher. I think I kind of started watching... Yeah, nine... I would say probably like five or six years old. I think. Damon Hill. I think I saw Damon Hill win his first world championship. I think. So... I think I have memories of that, of him in the Williams. Can I kill with the mu music, Joss? Um, not really, buddy. I can turn it down just a little bit, but I like the fact that we just have a little bit of background noise. I'll turn it down a little touch, because um, otherwise it is just... I feel like, yeah, we need just a bit of background noise. When we watch other watch-alongs, it's a bit quiet. I know, obviously, my voice does a lot of the talk, is, covers that, but... Hey, James. You were lying in my late 20s. Thank you, Given. Thank you. See, this is the ego. This is why I do these watch-alongs, to get the ego boost, you see. <laughs> so, where did I get my helmet from? Uh, so, that helmet I actually got from a competition. There was a gift bag. I qualified for a Mercedes sim racing competition um, in one of their stores in London. But they was opening a watch store, one of their sponsors. Um, and yeah, I actually won a tour of the Mercedes F1 factory. Um, couple last, not last year, the year before, I think it was. Oh, no, maybe it was last year, actually, early last year. So yeah, really, really enjoyed that. And that was part of the gift, gift set that we got. <clears throat> Helps the family sleep with the music as well. <laughs> I'm 51. No, I'm not. not yeah. Oh, thanks, James. Yeah, glad you enjoyed it, buddy. Yeah, glad I enjoyed it. What team am I supporting today? Um, I'm not supporting any team or any team other than Red Bull, to be honest with you, at the moment. And um, it's no if you're new to if you're not new to this channel, if you are new to this channel, um, it is no secret that I am not Red Bull's 
number one fan. Um, for many reasons, but at the moment, of course, they have the most dominant package. They have been the most dominant car over the last three years. And it's just nice. It would be nice to see, of course, anyone up but Red Bull and that dominating team win. Um, so, yeah. I'd like to see Alonso do well today. I would like to see Alonso to do well today. I am all here for the Alonso drama today. I am all here for it. And the Ferraris as well. So I'm just intrigued to see. But of course, I do. I always want drivers to do well with their home circuits. So Guan Yu Zhou is a great, he obviously a great story for him. Uh, being here, the first Chinese driver to race at the Chinese Grand Prix. Um, so, yeah, it'd be great for him to, unfortunately, unable to get out of Q1 yesterday, only by a couple of thousandths of a second. But you'd like to think that he can have a race today and potentially make his way up that grid um, towards his teammate. If, if the Stake F1 team can actually make a three to four second pit stop, because at the moment, every pit stop they make is around 10 seconds and just undoing all of the work that their drivers are um, making out on circuit. <clears throat> is it Guan Yu Zhu or is it Zhou Guan Yu? I always forget, apologies, what his first name is, which way round it is. Is it Zhou Guan Yu? Both. Does it? It doesn't matter. Is it like either way? <laughs> Zhou is he saying? Is it his surname? I thought it might have been the other way around. Zhou Guan Yu. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, guys, we are. Uh, whoa, there we go. I was about to say, only seconds away from the um, grid releasing their tire blankets, and here we are. So. If you're just joining us, you have just over two minutes until they go on their formation lap. We have 10% chance of rain today. Um, welcome, Karim. Welcome, Karim. Um, we have Max Verstappen on pole position. And from anyone down from him, the top 10 all starting on the medium compound tyre. Lance Stroll, that outlier there in P11. Um, so we'll see if he can get punchy. We saw George Russell try it in the sprint race on Saturday. And it didn't quite work for him, that advantage tire advantage didn't really have the benefit that i think the mercedes team were hoping so we'll see if lance Stroll was able to utilize that um in the first few laps ricardo is on mediums and then we have magnuson the only driver there on the hard compound tire hamilton on a set of softs sonoda on softs and then sergeant in the pit lane starting on softs as well so a bit of a mixture towards the back end of the grid the back uh the last uh, from P11 to P20, um, but the top 10 all starting on the medium compound tyre. I suppose that leaves their options open for um, mixing up their strategies. Everyone on a brand new set of softs, uh, brand new set of tyres as well. So, yeah, only just uh, um, over a minute away until the formation lap gets underway, guys. I'm just going to go crack open a window because it's getting very hot in this room. And if you could hit the like button just before we start, let's get it to 100 likes before the race starts. That'd be great but yeah stay tuned guys if you want to make yourself coffee and a drink and not miss the start of this race now is the time to do it right 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 Oh, yes, Max Verstappen is reporting. There might already be a few drizzles. Please, please, please let it rain. Please, please let it rain. Oh, my God, that would be the most amazing news. That would be the most amazing news. Um, so I'm going to get a track limits tracker up because I think there might be some track limits today. Um, and I'll get the investigations tracker up as well. That's for me just to keep an eye out on. But wow, that would be great. That would be absolutely amazing if we do have the... <laughs> if we do have rain, it's only 10% chance. Come on. I'm all here for it, guys. I'm all here for it. The only thing that could stop Max is the, 
special operation team. Yeah. <coughs> right, guys. Right, guys. We are only just uh, over a, probably a minute away until the race gets underway as they head out on their formation laps. Um, let's see what this Chinese Grand Prix, the first in five years, has in store for us. We got a sneak peek on Friday, uh, sorry, on Saturday morning with the sprint shootout, uh, the medium compound tyre. Those guys uh, took those tyres around 19 laps. We'll see if those guys will do that again this time around. I don't think they will. Uh, I think they will see a couple of guys pit a little bit earlier. The undercut, I imagine, will be powerful here today. Uh, so let's see what um, the drivers tend to do. Hopefully, there's a bit more overtaking than we saw in the sprint shoot. shoot uh, sorry, in the sprint race as well. Uh, so yeah, but Perez in P. Uh, sorry. Perez not in P1, getting ahead of myself there, apologies. Max Verstappen P1, Perez in P... Oh, all right, so Pirelli have on the TV coverage suggested that a two-stop race, medium to hards to medium, so 17 laps they're suggesting on the medium compound tyre. For those stop, for those on the softs, it is 12 laps, then pitting onto a brand, two brand new sets of hard compound tyres. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, around 17, 12 to 17 laps is what we expect to see guys come in and pit, maybe 12 to 20 laps. We know these guys sometimes take these cars, uh, these tyres a little bit longer. I still, think, I still think we'll see these guys pit in a little bit earlier just to get into some clean air. But let's run through our grid for the Chinese Grand Prix. We have Max Verstappen in P1 with his teammate in the other Red Bull Perez lining up alongside him in P2. Fernando Alonso, P3. Norris, P4. Piastri, P5. The two Ferraris in 6th and 7th. We'll see how that um, relationship unfolds throughout this race. It's always got, it's already got a little bit fraught this weekend. George Russell in P8. Nico Hulkenberg in 9th. Bottas in the stake. F1 car in 10th. Lando, uh, Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll in P11 on the soft compound. Ricardo there in P12 needs a good showing today to round off what has been a good weekend thus far. Sebastian, uh, Esteban Ocon in 13th, Albon 14th, Gasly 15th, Guan Yu Zhou racing at his home circuit in 16th. Hopefully he can make up some positions and give the Chinese fans something to shout for and cheer on for today. Madison in 17th, Hamilton in 18th. We know how much of a shocker he had in qualifying yesterday. We'll see if he's able to make up any positions um, in the early stages of this race on the soft compound tyre. Yuki Tsunoda in 19th and Logan Sargent starting in the pit lane, no doubt breaking Park Ferme and making some setup changes. <clears throat> right, here we go, guys. Here we go. Please, over 100 likes already for the stream. Thank you very much. 1,200 of, 1200 of you in here as the guys are lining up on the grid, only moments away from the Chinese Grand Prix getting underway. Too embarrassed. <laughs> potentially. Potentially. Right, here we go. Sonoda has lined up on the back of the grid here. They are there. It is lights on. Out. And it is away we go as they head down to the first corner for the first time here in five years other than the sprint shooter but in a race GP format. It seems Vax Verstappen has been able to hold on to the position for now as Fernando Alonso gets ahead of... A Head of uh, Verstappen there, uh, sorry, not Verstappen, Perez down into turn one. And Fernando Alonso holds on to that position as Declare gets ahead of Russell. Sainz has lost two positions there. The biggest loser, oh no, he regains it back from Hulkenberg with that double right-hander. And we have the two Ferrari drivers who have lost positions there at the start to George Russell. And Hulkenberg regains that position back from Leclerc, uh, from Carlos Sainz as Hamilton keeps chopping and changing positions with Yuki Tsunoda at the back of the pack. That's not a sentence that I thought I'd be stringing together today when this weekend started. Valtteri Bottas loses position to Lance Stroll on the soft compound tyres. Guan Yu Zhou back down into 17th place. But already Max Verstappen has a 1.3 second lead over Alonso as they head round turn 12 for the first time onto the back straight. Just watching the TV coverage. Perez didn't get a great start. Fernando got a great start and swung it round the outside of Perez. Even had a look at Verstappen as they went into turn 2. What a great, punchy and aggressive start from Fernando Alonso. Brilliant, brilliant. So here they are heading down into turn 14. The sharp breaking zone for the first time. Hulkenberg has got ahead of Charles Leclerc. 
the horse car of Nico Hulkenberg is ahead of both Ferrari drivers at this moment in time. Leclerc all under braking through turn 14 in that tight hairpin has been able to regain that position. And I think Carlos Sainz was going side by side through Hulkenberg as well. But a great start from the heart of Hulkenberg, who notoriously has has a great qualifying but then falls back through the pack come race day apologies for the slight delays on the track map it seems um, as we are receiving data from the other side of the world in china but signs regains that position from nico hulkenberg as we have the first lap completed with drs now activated no longer having to wait two laps for a uh, for drs to become activated in races now only that single lap to hopefully try and entice better and closer racing but it hasn't affected max verstappen bye max bye max but we'll see you we'll see you in a couple of weeks time <laughs> already two seconds ahead of fernando alonso um wow wow but um we'll see if if Perez is going to be able to close the gap on Alonso, he needs to if he ha wants to have any opportunity of fighting his teammate, which I think we all know is uh, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it is Alonso in P2, Perez P3, Norris and Piastri holding position in fourth and fifth. A great start from Russell in P6 there, who will be looking at the back of the rear wing of P Oscar Piastri. Let's see if the DRS is effective. How punchy is that? Uh, Aston Martin and Fernando Alonso in P2 with Perez closing, closing, closing. And oh, very, very late on the brakes there, uh, Sergio Perez, as he gets very, very close to Fernando Alonso. They do get DRS again as they head down into turn one, and he is only half a second behind as Max Verstappen sits the fastest lap of the race, 140.1. Only his teammate is in the 40s as well, but seven tenths slower as he is tight behind Fernando Alonso as they head into turn one. And there's slight delay there with the trap map. Apologies once again. Hopefully that sorts itself out. <coughs> <coughs> but Perez holds station, not able to get past Fernando Alonso at this moment in time. But you would think with the superior tyre management that the Red Bulls have, it is only a matter of time before Perez. And Hamilton already reporting, I'm making no ground on this tyre. As Guan Yu Zhou has lost another position. Um, Yuki Tsunoda already up behind his teammate on the soft compound tyre. So Danny Ricciardo losing three positions at the start of this race to Albon, Gaz uh, Ocon, Albon and Gasly. Now has his teammate on his uh, in his rearview mirrors. Not a great start for Danny Ricciardo, especially with Yuki Tsunoda. They are on different strategies though. So Yuki Tsunoda will be quicker um, on raw lap time at this stage of the race on the soft compound tire. Interesting to see how Magnussen gets on um, down the back there. Uh, we have an incident involving Lance Stroll and Nico Hulkenberg. Um, and Albon is reporting this guy is moving everywhere in relation to Esteban Ocon, I believe, as Perez in the DRS once again, um, as he comes down into turn 14, not close enough, not, not close enough to Fernando Alonso, that Aston Martin, does seem to be pretty quick in clean air. And George Russell eyeing up the back of Oscar Piastri. He is now only four temps behind. This is a could be a great uh, race here today for George Russell. Already up two positions, but doesn't quite get the exit out of turn 16. Sergio as well. He's gaining, he's gaining on Alonso. But Alonso just for now has enough. We'll see how long he's able to hold on to him. For, I mean, it was only really until Alonso made a mistake yesterday um, that Sainz was able to um, cause kind of that, not carnage, but allow Perez to come through. If it wasn't for that, I think Perez might have been stuck uh, finishing outside of the podium positions in the sprint race. But uh, you can already see there, Max Verstappen three and a half seconds ahead of Fernando Alonso, who is holding up his teammate. Uh, Perez really needs to get past. Lando Norris staying with them slightly just outside of the toe uh maybe this is a conscious decision for norris already just to look after his tires a little bit more or is it raw pace i don't know oscar piastri not far behind either doesn't seem to have the pace of his teammate in the early stages of this race but he does have a very very aggressive george russell um looking at his rear wing leclerc seems to be gaining and pulling away from carlos signs um so 
Lance Stroll going quite nicely on the soft compound tyres. How is Hamilton? Let's have a Hamilton check. He has got past Kevin Magnussen on the hard compound tyre. Um, remember, around lap 12 is when Pirelli suggested those soft runners will be coming into the pits to change. Um, I imagine, I do still think we'll get some guys pull the undercut. As Alex Albon is under attack from Gasly there. They're the clo two closest out on circuit at the moment. Albon complaining about Esteban Ocon and the way that he was driving, moving all over the circuit. Uh, we know sometimes that Esteban Ocon can maybe go over that limit when it comes to defending um, out on circuit. Um, we've seen that uh, a few times before, but he's held Gasly off just for now. Good race thus far for the Alpines. Um, they're not in the bottom five. So that's a good result for the Alpines at the moment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Hamilton's struggling at the back. Yeah, there's just not... Mercedes don't have that large of a pace advantage, and these cars are not easy to overtake in anymore. Not like they were back in 2022. As Perez, very, very close to Fernando Alonso now, looks at a move down into turn six and actually gets the move done on Alonso down into turn six. Will Alonso be coming back at the Red Bull of Sergio Perez? But that is exactly what Sergio needed. But his teammate is already 4.8 seconds down the road. And Fernando, I just don't think... I mean, realistically, Perez isn't his race today. He needs to just use Perez to his advantage, stay in that DRS if he can, and pull out a gap on the McLaren of Lando Norris. We will see if he's able to do so. Podium would be great for the Aston Martin. But yeah, Perez there, not even needing the DRS. And I think that's predominantly where moves need to be done on this circuit is not in the DRS zones. I don't think the DRS is as effective as it is at other circuits. Um, we are seeing kind of some trains, uh, some DRS trains at the moment. The moves need to be done late on the brakes into these non-DRS zones. The likes of turn nine, the likes of turn six there from Perez. So just watched it on TV, and that was a lovely controlled move from Sergio Perez there. So four and a half, five and a half seconds back from his teammate now. Um, that's what getting stuck behind Fernando Alonso at the first corner of this race has done for Sergio Perez. Um, so it's a very tall order, kind of an unlikely order, but he will be able to get, catch his teammate without the uh, um, help of a safety car. But Alonso staying within the DRS of Alon uh, of Perez, which is what he needs to do. One point one, only one point one seconds ahead of Norris. Now we have uh, a track limits violation for Gasly, one for Hulkenberg already as well. So the guys are pushing out there. Um, so let's uh, see if there's anything. There's still nothing that has come of um, Albon and Gasly noted forcing another driver off the track. Um, so likewise with Stroll and Hulkenberg, no penalties dished out or. Um, no result of those investigations has been posted yet. But you can quite clearly see that Norris there um, is quite evidently quicker than his teammate Piastri. Maybe Piastri, we said, is going to be an important race for him today, uh, managing those tyres, an area which he has been quite poor in of recent times or since he's joined F1. Um, and Lance Stroll definitely forced Nico Hulkenberg off the circuit there. That's got to be a penalty, I think, for, for Lance Stroll. I think that's a definite penalty for Lance Stroll there, forcing Nico Hulkenberg off the track, considering he lost that position as well. But let's have a look a little bit further down the grid at Lewis Hamilton. For you Lewis Hamilton fans out there, myself included, um, he is down in 17th position. He has lost a position at the start to Yuki Tsunoda. He is on a set of soft compound tyres. So pulling away from the likes of Magnussen and Zhou. Zhou not having the best of it at the moment in this race down in 19th position. Hopefully that changes for him and the home fans. Uh, but Hamilton is on the back of Yuki Tsunoda. And I wonder if he'll go for the move on Yuki or if he'll just use Yuki to catch up to the back of Danny Ricciardo. <coughs> I'm assuming you'd want to overtake him um, and try and make up as many positions as you can while on this set of soft compounds. But he's just not able to. Um, only two temps faster last time around, Lewis. And that might have been even with the assistance of DRS. Uh, but Danny Ricciardo, poor start for him. Down three positions in 15th. Um, he is just within the DRS or... Yeah, just within the DRS of Pierre Gasly ahead of him. So he needs to catch up to that fight of Albon and Gasly um, sooner rather than later. Uh, we have Valtteri Bottas in 11th with a little uh, group forming there of Ocon, Bottas and Hulkenberg. So keep an eye on that. Lance Stroll pulling away, but could potentially get a uh, time penalty in the pits. 
uh, because, or be forced to give up that position back to Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, very similar to Science and Leclerc. Um, I'm surprised Science didn't get a penalty, but I think that was primarily pr because Leclerc um, kept that position in the sprint race. So, but look at that, 6.3 seconds ahead of his teammate already with only seven laps completed. Uh, Max Verstappen ahead of his teammate. Uh, at least half a second quick up per lap than Perez as Norris makes a move with the DRS open down into turn 14 on Fernando Alonso. They go side by side. Is Norris able to keep a hold of this position and then focus on the red ball of Sergio Perez? We knew the McLaren would be quick here today and he has done after a very poor start yesterday and throwing away a decent result in the sprint race. Lando Norris has got ahead of Fernando Alonso on lap seven and will now have some clean air ahead of him. You would think that the McLaren does have the pace on the Aston Martin overall, and Norris has the potential to chase down Sergio. The pace that uh, Perez has been setting at the moment is considerably slower than his teammates. Let's go, Lando. Let's go. Because you're the only one who's going to provide any spiciness at the front at the moment. So... I'm all for those individuals, whoever it may be, is going to provide us that. It was Alonso, and now it's moved to Lando, guys. Um, Russell under attack from Charles Leclerc now, it seems. Uh, very, very close in his... Uh in his DRS, you can see there that Leclerc, um, three temps behind George Russell. You will think this is only a matter of time. If Russell isn't able to gain the DRS of Piastri by the time they head to turn 12, um, I think Leclerc will get a move done here. Uh, Carlos Sainz just sitting patiently back um, outside of the dirty air, you would think, of Charles Leclerc. But yeah, good move. Good move from Lando there. Um, and he's already pulled out a 1.6 second lead on Alonso. So Alonso may be struggling on those tyres already. Um, we have um, Stroll and Hulkenberg is under investigation, forcing another driver off the circuit, as well as Albon and Gasly. That's just a, a re reaffirmation that that is being investigated. So here goes Charles Leclerc. Is he going to be able to do it down into turn 14? Late on the brakes, it looks like it. They're side by side through turn 14. Is anyone going to be run off the circuit here? No. George Russell holds on to that position for a little bit longer. But there's still another opportunity down into turn one. If Leclerc is able to get a good exit, he is very close. You can see three temps there. DRS open. Very similar corner to Suzuka, the first corner at Suzuka. You can sweep it round the outside here. And that's exactly what Charles Leclerc has done as he heads into the turn one with that DRS open and overtakes the Mercedes of George Russell and heads up into P6. Uh, what was a good start for him. Uh, George Russell is just, he's just starting to slip back a little bit. Maybe that Mercedes is starting to struggle on the medium compound tyres as we have our first pits. Of the race, Guan Yu Zhou in 20th, Yuki Sonoda coming off of the soft compound, and Nico Hulkenberg pitting from 9th position um, down into 18th as well. So this is the undercut that we was predicting. Not even 10 laps into this race, we are seeing guys pit early to try and get into some clean air and make the undercut work because it is tough to overtake here today. But, yeah, great move there from Charles Leclerc on George Russell. Just watching it back on TV now. Very, very good traction out of the last corner. George Russell defended to the inside, and Leclerc just swooped round the in outside. That's the beauty of this corner and this section um, at, the at the Shanghai circuit. Lovely, lovely jubbly, guys. Thank you for everyone who's tuning in. Apologies, I haven't been catching up with chat. Just trying to focus on the race for you all. If you can hit the like button and get this stream to another 1,000 likes, that'd be much appreciated. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. We achieved 20,000 subs yesterday at a massive milestone. Let's get to 25K now. Let's get to 25K. That'd be amazing. Um, so no further action for Stroll and Hulkenberg. I am surprised about that. I thought you was not allowed to run another car off the circuit. I'm really surprised that that is the case. Um, mm, mm, that is an interesting one. I, I, I'm not sure I agree about that. Not sure I agree about that. Um, if you're just wondering how many laps we have completed at the top left-hand side of your screen, where the Chinese you can see the Chinese flag, it does indicate uh, how many laps we have completed with how many are remaining. So we have 47 laps remaining, 10 laps completed. We have a number of guys coming into the pits now, responding to those undercuts, or maybe the tyres are just falling off. That is how quick they are falling off here today. Maybe we're going to see, depending on how long the hard tyre lasts, 
I think we might see... I think we might see potentially a free stopper. If that hard compound tire doesn't last very long, we could see a free stop here today. That would be interesting. Um, but yeah, we have Albon out. We have Hamilton out now on a set of mediums. That's put him down into 19th position. Um, he has gained, though, on the likes of Ocon um, and Albon there. He's lost a bit of time to Yuki Tsunoda, it seems, where Yuki pitted a lap earlier than Hamilton or two laps earlier. Uh, Bottas also out of the pits on the set of hards. So we have very, we have contrast here in strategies. Uh, Pirelli did suggest that it would be a soft, hard, hard race if you were starting on the softs as uh, Leclerc is getting close to the back of Oscar Piastri as well as Leclerc on George Russell. But none of the front runners, the top eight, have pitted yet. Let's see who will bite the bullet first and come into the pit lane. No one pits yet. They are extending their stints. We are still quite early in the grand scheme of things. Pirelli suggested 15 to 17 laps for the medium compound tyres. But interestingly, Hamilton has gone on to set a mediums after uh, jumping off of after starting on the soft compound tyre down in 19th position. Woof. Nearly, nearly dead last. As Yuki Tsunoda gets past Alex Albon there, down into turn 14. But I think Alex Albon's going to come back at him as they head down into turn 16. Alex Albon has regained the position from Yuki Tsunoda, but then Yuki Tsunoda regains it back into turn 16 there. Side-by-side -side action between the Alpha Tauri, that's what I'm calling them, the Alpha Tauri car of Yuki Tsunoda and Alex Albon. Um, great, great racing by those two. Respectful. Doesn't seem to be any shoving off the circuit there. Unfortunately, it's not for points positions, guys. It is for 17th place, but any on-track action is welcomed here. Lonzo needs to get back to position three. Well, that's his aim. Um, might be thinking about just... I mean, he's not got the pace to catch up to Norris, that's for sure. But Norris is catching Sergio Perez. Norris is catching Sergio Perez, guys. This uh, is... Let's have a look at Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Lewis Hamilton said that was the worst tyre for starting on the softs. So, to be honest, mate, there's not much you can really do starting down in 18th position. So, you've, uh, yeah, kind of left yourself in the mud by your qualifying race. Uh, but Oscar Piastri is overtaken there in turn to fur into turn 14 by Charles Leclerc. And Charles Leclerc having a good race today. And Fernando Alonso comes into the pit lane as... The no, Fernando Alonso goes... Yeah, no, Fernando Alonso's okay. He came into the pit lane. Don't let me scare you. Don't let me scare you. Uh, but Fernando Alonso into the pits. Here comes George Russell into the pit lane as well. These are the first guys out of the top eight who are coming into the pit lane. This is still early. This is still early to come off of those medium compound tyres. Um, but it's interesting for us, guys. It is very interesting for us. But Sergio Perez losing time to Lando Norris at the moment. 2.7 seconds Um in front of the McLaren at the moment. Uh, Nor Norris did lose just a tenth there actually last time around, but he has been gaining over the course of these previous laps. Charles Leclerc seems to be going very well, uh, so we'll see if he's able to catch up to Norris. Piastri, quite evidently not got the pace of his teammate today, maybe struggling with that tyre management, which we discussed at the start of this race. But as we head into turn, as we head into uh, lap 12, and we've had those first pit uh, pitters out of the top eight. We have Alonso in P10 moving on to the hard compounds. And we have Russell into P11. And this is not a false alarm, guys. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Logan Sargent is indeed in ninth position in a points finish. <laughs> Albeit everyone has pitted behind him. <laughs> but he is in ninth position. He is in <laughs> he is he needs a red flag logan Sargent needs a red flag and he'll be in ninth place <laughs> whoop, whoop. <sighs> pierre gasly apparently had a uh, terrible pit stop but um, last time around, Lando gained again two temps faster than Sergio Perez. Uh, so he is chopping away at that gap there. Uh, whereas Max Verstappen, on the contrary, is now 
is now just increasing that gap nearly to 10 seconds on his teammate. Hamilton on the back of Yuki Sonona now as he made short work of Alex Albon. Logan Sargent falling down for the pack as he came into the pit lane. He won't be dead last though, guys. He won't be dead last due to that poor pit stop of Pierre Gasly. He was having a shocking year um, thus far. Kind of no fault of his own, though, due to uh, the poor performance of that Alpine car. Uh, he is down in 20th place on a set of hard compounds. So let's have a little rundown of the grid um, as it stands with uh, half of the grid making pit stops and half of them kind of not. We have Max Verstappen in P1, 10 seconds ahead of his teammates. It's been very, very easy work for him thus far. We have Sergio Perez in P2 being chased down by Lando Norris and he is indeed being chased down. That interval is getting smaller. Charles Leclerc in P4 now up two positions. He's also looking to chase down Lando. Does seem to have a bit more pace as Max Verstappen comes into the pit lane. So does Sergio Perez. Lando stays out. Lando stays out. He does not come in as a direct response to the two Red Bulls. They're double stacking the Red Bulls there. Um, and Leclerc stays out also, as well as Piastri, as does Sainz. So the Red Bulls coming in quite early there. The team that is very faultless when it comes to strategy and their pit stops has pitted earlier than anyone else. And I think them going onto the hard compound tyre there, um, that leaves them open to either use another set of hards um, if they have them available um, in the last stint of this race. Or they can go onto another set of mediums. We will see. Um, unfortunately, Pirelli haven't provided us with a tyre allocation graphic for today. So I have no idea um, in regards to... What drivers are going to be using as strategies but yeah that's um that is a bit earlier we'll see if any of the other teams respond directly to that will lando respond to perez he did seem to have the pace on perez and was chopping away at that um interval and that gap so we'll see the likewise with leclerc who was doing a full did a 42 0 last time around but you can see lando did a 41 8 last time so let's see let's see george russell setting good lap times there on a brand new set of mediums in p9 he's trying to trace down fernando alonso which it looks like he is most definitely doing as alonso is on a set of hard compound tires so don't worry alonso fans varying strategies happening here in this race and fernando alonso um it could all work out for him still could work out for him Gastro having a free time world champion breathing down his neck, yeah. <laughs> As Verstappen makes quick work of Oscar Piastri down into turn 14. Uh, no reason for Piastri to fight. He's on a set of 13 old lap medium tyres and Verstappen's on a brand new set of hards. So interestingly, Lando does not respond to the Red Bulls pitting. Neither does Leclerc, neither does Piastri and neither does Sainz. And to be honest, that's not a bad thing for them because Lando Norris did a 41-6 last time around. That's quite comfortably one of his fastest laps of this race. Declare setting his fastest lap of the race in P2 also. Um, so we'll see. But Perez went fastest in the last sector there. So they have gone onto the hard compound tyres. Um, so hopefully this strategy, by keeping both the Ferraris and the, the McLarens out longer... Um, will at least make it interesting up front fighting Perez. We know uh, Verstappen just has too much pace advantage here this weekend. Um, so that's not really that's not really uh, anything to keep too much of a close eye out on. But P2 is definitely up for grabs when it comes to Lando um, and the McLaren team. So we saw uh, Ricardo pit. He's now in P18 after staying out there and extending that early stint. <coughs> Uh, Lewis Hamilton has got past Yuki Tsunoda, guys, and is up into 14th position. So not done too bad thus far after the pit stops. Lewis Hamilton is now up four positions where he was at 1.19th. Uh, Danny Ricciardo has come out behind Guan Yu Zhou, though. But this is interesting, guys. As it, I said over the weekend, it was going to be a race of not really pure speed it was going to be more done so and decided on strategy and you can see here the different strategies that teams are deploying we have some on the medium tire some on the hard tire though some extending their stint like mclaren at the moment and ferrari uh, we have alonso who came in quite early uh, so russell came in quite early as well so yeah interesting this is a interesting one that's going to play out guys Please don't screw it up, Lando. <laughs> no, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. So 39.5 for Max. Fastest lap of the race on a brand new set of hard compound tyres. 
Ferrari strategy might not be that bad. Well, no, exactly. So the old Ferrari, as Verstappen is uh, eyeing up Leclerc now and wants to make short work of him. The old Ferrari, yes, their strategies were very poor. However, now they have a new strategy, head of strategy, and their strategies have been pretty good, to be honest with you, and so have their pit stops. So it's definitely an area they've improved over the last like couple of years, that's for sure. What do the greens mean on the interval? So if they're highlighted in green, it means that they are in the DRS of the driver ahead of them. Um, if they um, if they actually are highlighted, I generally actually don't know what that means. Uh, sorry, so when it's highlighted, yes, but when it's circled like Lewis Hamilton is here, I actually don't know what that indicates. So, um, yeah, apologies about that one. But when it's highlighted, it means they're within... They've got DRS, and then, of course, you've got the DRS activation here, which will indicate when they have their DRS open. Um, but Max Verstappen made quick work of Charles Leclerc, and now will be chasing down his best mate Lando in P1. Let's see if Lando is going to come into pits. No, he continues. So McLaren extending this stint um, to around the 17 lap mark, but uh, thus far, as we head into lap 17, which Pirelli were suggesting. Uh, Piastri is coming into the pit lane. So they're pitting Piastri first. And the two Ferraris are staying out there. We'll see if Sainz is able to hold off Perez. Um, and if he does, that will massively help uh, Lando. So come on, Sainz. Do us, do us a solid here and hold up the Red Bull. And uh, that will benefit Lando. But let's have a look a little bit further down the grid, guys, as we have f over 3,000 of you here in the stream for, like, the fifth race in a row. Thank you very much. If you could hit the like button, get this stream to over 1,000 likes again, and subscribe as well. Um, let's, get this, let's get this to 25,000. Let's hit that next milestone. We achieved 20K yesterday, subs. Let's get that to 25,000. So, yeah, thanks, everyone, for tuning back in and enjoying these streams. Um, Hamilton complaining about the car. I can't catch him, mate. This car is so slow. Well, you're not going to have a fast car until next year, buddy. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, not good times for Lewis Hamilton. Um, but let's see if that's actually true. Is he unable to catch Esteban Ocon? Uh, last time around, he did a 42.5 and Ocon did a 42.4. And they're on differing compounds of tyre there, hard and medium. So, um that Lewis Hamilton on the last lap, at least, was a true statement. But let's see if it is the case next time around. And um, if it's just Lewis Hamilton complaining, uh, which all racing drivers do when things aren't going their way. So Perez iron up signs as they head down into turn 14. Will signs fight this under braking into turn 14? And it looks like that he is. Signs, oh, he tried to hold off Perez, but I think Perez with that extra grip of the hard compound tyre, which is only three laps old, and Signs was coming into the pit lane anyway, so wasn't fighting it too hard, maybe. Um, but yeah, Signs into the pit lane now, and we'll see. Well, I think he might lose a position to Oscar Piastri, which we know was the case. Oof. Um, Leclerc, Ferrari throwing out letters of the alphabet again. How are you for Plan D, Plan Delta? Uh-oh, uh-oh. Um, but maybe Leclerc is going to go and do a one-stop here. Could he be crazy enough to do another one-stop like he did in Japan? We will see. Uh, maybe that's what Lando's going to do as well. Maybe Lando's going to try and do the one-stop, especially if the Red Bull have committed to a two-stop already. Um, of course, if there is a safety car as well, we will see Gasly being investigated for the car being released in an unsafe condition. That was due to that right rear tyre potentially not being um, on the car correctly. So Magnussen dives into the pits, 17 laps on those hard compound tyres. Let's see what he comes out onto. He comes out onto another set of hard tyres. So interesting. Magnussen was also the only other driver in Japan to do a single stop, guys. Um with Leclerc and it worked out well it kind of worked out well for him he finished just outside the points positions I think but he does like a one stopper Magnussen but he won't be doing that today with another set of hard compound tyres he needs to use two sets of different compounds so he will have to go onto the softs or mediums come the end of the race the staff has got up to Norris very well um of course he will yeah he's in a much superior car he is um quite evidently the fastest driver here this weekend and yeah uh max is not lando's race <laughs> perez is lando's race today they could definitely get a p2 that is for sure 
So Carlos Sainz came out behind Nico Hulkenberg and has made quick work of him. Um, he'll be looking to chase down Stroll and Piastri. Um, Stroll has got ahead of Sainz at the moment, but there's a bit of an offset here with Stroll already eight laps into his current stint and Sainz just starting his second. Um, Perez, is he gaining on Charles Leclerc? He is indeed two seconds a lap quicker last time around. That is the fall off of those medium tyres compared to a brand, relatively brand new set of hard compounds. <coughs> At this stage of the race, look, um, Oscar Piastri there, a sub-40 uh, sub second lap time there um, on another set of mediums. Interesting. So maybe they're saving the hards for the end, and we'll see what Norris does. Is Norris going to do a one-stop yet to come into the pits? Um, but if they do go for a one-stop, that means Perez is going to have to catch Norris and overtake him out on circuit. So... Interesting, as Verstappen in the DRS of Norris makes easy work of his good friend down into turn 14. Norris, if you're complaining that Norris should fight that position, it's not his race today. It's not his race. He's on 18 lap old medium compounds. Um, it would just be a detriment to his race and strategy today. So Leclerc, is he going to come into the pit lane or is he continuing on? Leclerc is going long. So yes, that plan D, who knows what that is. Potentially that could be a one stopper. I didn't think it was on the cards today, um, but well, we will see. We will see. Bro just doesn't want to pit. No, no, but it might be working for him. It might, uh, it might be them extending, going long. The thing is, the longer they go, the more fresher tyres they'll have come the end of the race. Um, however, I do think McLaren dropped the ball uh, in Australia, expecting these tyres to fall off a lot quicker than they did. Um, and you don't want the uh, McLaren to do the same again here uh, today. And expect that tyres um, at the end of the race are going to drop off when... They might not necessarily uh, because they have lighter fuel loads, of course, so there's less energy being put through the tyres than there are um, during the early stages of the race. So hopefully McLaren, um, after dropping the ball yeah, in um, Suzuka and Australia, really, um, I think they uh, they need they need to uh, get their, have their head screwed on this time around. So Lewis Hamilton update, guys. Lewis Hamilton update. He has got past Danny Ricciardo in P14 and is now up five positions to P13. So he hasn't been able to close the gap on Esteban Ocon. So yeah, potentially that Mercedes not quick enough to catch up to an Alpine. What? We'll see. We'll see. I want to keep want to keep an eye out on those lap times um, of Lewis Hamilton and Esteban Ocon. And we have a yellow Bottas off. Has he spun it? Has there been contact? What has happened here? Are we going to see a safety car? There is a yellow in turn 11. It, I believe there is gravel out there. So what has happened to Valtteri Bottas as he's falling down the pack here? Oh, no. This is not good for Valtteri Bottas. But could this bring out a virtual safety car or a safety car? We're yet to see that marker of Valtteri Bottas move. I'm yet to see it on the TV coverage of what exactly has happened to Valtteri. But he's not moving, which to me indicates potentially he has got an issue. And there is a safe... Oh, there is a yellow flag all the way up into turn 11 as well, of course, for the approach because he's on that tight turn 11. Let's see exactly what has happened. Just waiting for the TV coverage. Max Verstappen goes through that corner quite full speed. So maybe he's just pulled the car off. Oh, I mean, that's not exactly in the safest of positions. So he's he's pretty much straight on. Yeah, the engine has gone, guys. You are correct. Um, the rear of the car is smoking. We're just seeing the engine has definitely gone. Is this going to be a virtual safety car? Um, because if someone locks up and goes straight on there, he could be... Well, they're in a... Um, he's in a quite a precarious position. They're making quite a long. They're waiting quite long to decide whether there's going to be a VSC or if there. Yes, there is a VSC right on cue there. I think that's the right decision. Full safety car might not be the correct decision um, because 
they could probably get that car out of the way. But of course, when an engine's gone, there's always potential of there being a fire on the car. So we'll see how quickly they're able to remove that. But will anyone make an opportunity of a cheap pit stop here? Of course, you are able to make gain some time in the pit lane and Leclerc. Leclerc has made advantage of that. Um, so this could work out very, very well for Charles Leclerc. Did that, did that VSC come out just after Lando Norris passed the pit lane? I missed that, guys. Did he, did the VSC come out just after he passed the pit lane through, to, through the last corner? Has he missed it? As Lance Stroll makes advantage of the cheap pit stop as well. Yes, Bonnie, yeah. Imogen, yeah, he did. Yeah, okay. Okay, so yeah, that's... Ooh, that's... I mean, he still can probably make it... Make a, an, uh, he probably can still gain an advantage on it if this VSC lasts until he gets round to that pit stop again. But, um... Yeah, Lando has reported he's not happy, uh, apparently, on the radio. Um, but if this... Hang on. So, um, apparently, Lando was reporting there's debris on circuit and that there should be a safety car. As, Lando, as Hamilton also makes the benefit of that VSC as well and gets onto the hard compound tyre. Um, who, uh, So, he's down into 17th place. We saw Lance Stroll take advantage of it as well. Um, Norris still can take advantage of this, I believe, if he... If this VSC lasts as they head into um, the last corner, which I think it's going to. So, yeah, he will be fine. As long as everyone's under VSC, he will be able to benefit from this. Uh, from this. But if he's in the pit lane and this VSC gets removed, he will be at a disadvantage, of course. You'll be fine, Nilo. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh, did they next? Did they? Um... I'll, I'll try and keep an eye out on it. If they do again, of course, I will be... Um, I have no hesitation in removing people from the stream, so... Uh, but Norris pitted. So Norris still gets the benefit of that VSC. He's a fortunate man that this VSC is still on. Um, so, yeah, the reason why you gain time under the VSC is because you're able to go full speed through the pit lane entry and pit lane exit. Um, and you reduce the, while well, everyone else is trudging around at a delta. And you're able to gain a few seconds on everyone um, due to that fact. So, uh, yeah, Norris there comes out close behind Perez there. You can see um, how many seconds will that be? Or how many seconds is that interval as it's coming down? I mean, he's a lot, lot closer. He'll be on nine lap old fresher tyres. Um, or nine lap younger fresher tyres than Perez. So we've definitely got a race on here between the McLaren of Lando and Perez for P2. Max, 22 seconds down the road. <laughs> ridiculous, ridiculous. But yeah, Danny Ricciardo's not done too bad there in P11. Yuki's doing really good up into P12 as well for you Yuki fans. Although Yuki does have 14 lap medium, so I assume he will be, I assume he'll be pitting not too long um so he will drop further down the pack varying strategies there for ricardo and sonoda um so i don't think they're truly fighting each other out on circuit at the moment due to that tire difference but, um they're moving so uh, they're moving valtteri bottas's car how many people does it take there is a safety car wow wow we have an actual safety car i was about to say how many people does it take to move an F1 car? There was about 10, 11 guys trying to move Valtteri Bottas' car. And quite evidently, they cannot do it. So they have moved his car. Oh, no, hang on. It's now saying it's gr it's clear in Sector 12. So have they moved Valtteri Bottas' car? But is this because they want to remove debris? Is there debris out on circuit that requires them, of course, to have the pack backed up? This is going to get punchy, guys. This is going to get punchy. With the pack backing up here, um, I mean, it does kind of nullify. Um, so Verstappen and Perez making use, of course, of those pit stops uh, to get onto some, uh, sorry, that safety car to get onto some fresh tyres. So Perez does give up the position to Lando, but that's the right decision uh, because otherwise he would have lost a position 
<coughs> he would have lost out to Norris anyway. And well, that's worked out a treat for the Claire because the Claire is also ahead of Sergio Perez as well. Norris, the Claire is doing absolute wonders here, guys, as the Claire moves up into P3 by pitting under the VSC. He has massively gained there, and he has been able to get past Sergio Perez through the pit stops as we are seeing everyone dive into the pit lane now. They want to be on fresh tires. Fernando going bold with a set of soft compound tires um, compared to those who are on mediums. Let's see if Danny Ricardo Danny Ricardo is out. Danny Ricardo stayed out, interestingly enough, whereas Yuki has come in. Oof, I don't know what the order's going to be, guys. I don't know what the order's going to be. Lewis Hamilton has stayed out, so Lewis will gain a few positions here. This has worked out well for him. Um, he's not going to get past Ocon, though, through this pit stop. Um, maybe there'll be a few others. Um, but Perez on a brand new set of hards. Norris and Leclerc are pretty much brand new anyway because they've only done, like, VSC laps on them. Um, we have um, Piastri on a set of eight lap old mediums. We have Signs on six lap old hards. Alonso's the punchy one here on a set of softs. But we're not even halfway through this race yet, guys. Not even halfway through this race. Um, but quite evidently, there is some debris out on circuit, which requires a safety car for them to safely remove. Um, I think they have moved Valtteri's car. But... Just keeping an eye out on it. Thank you, Sam. I was just about to ask you for that, buddy. Thank you, buddy. Right, right. So, what is the order? What is the order here? Okay, so I think everyone's made pit stops. So, we've got Verstappen in P1. We have Norris in P2. Leclerc, P3. Perez, P4. They're all on pretty much brand new set of hard compound tires. We have Piastri on a set of eight lap old mediums. Sainz on a six lap old hard. Oh, actually, Piastri coming into the pit lane now. So Piastri is going to lose a few positions. That's the right decision. You can't be on six lap old mediums. <coughs> oh, Lewis saying the car feels like... Lewis says the car's sliding around everywhere. Feels like um, the, something's broken. I think that's just your Mercedes. <laughs> I think that's just a Mercedes car, to be honest with you guys. I think that uh, Mercedes is not very good, so. Why do they not close the gaps between the uh, between cars and the safety car? Um, they are. They are trying to close the gaps, Kazon. Um, that's what they're going to do. Um, but the safety car can't... The safety car can't go um, really, really slow because these F1 cars need to keep uh, temperature in the tyres. So he just has, they just have to wait a few laps for these cars to, to kind of bunch up. It might take a, a little while, though, because of Gasly, where he is on the circuit. Um, but yeah, so we have Verstappen in P1, Norris in P2, Leclerc P3, Perez P4. We have Sainz 5th, Alonso 6th, Russell 7th, Piastri 8th. Hasn't indicated what tyre he's come out onto yet. I imagine probably a set of hards. Uh, we have Ricardo in ninth, uh, but he is out there on 10 lap old medium tyres. He is quite clearly the driver who is out there on the oldest set of tyres. Not quite sure why the why they haven't pitted him there. Have they left Danny Ricardo hung out to dry? Um, there is a potential for that is what the Visa Cash App RB team have done. Uh, the VCarb team, Lance Stroll up into P10. Um, Esteban Ocon in P12. Uh, Hamilton in 13th. Magnussen in 14th. Uh, Guan Yu Zhou had a slow pit stop again, which Stake F1 seemed to be uh, doing every single time, uh, which is why he's down in 18th position. Yuki, uh, so Magnussen 14th. Yuki 15th. Albon 16th. Sergeant 17th. And Zhou 18th. And uh, Magnussen's on seven lap old hards. Ricardo's on ten lap old mediums. Signs on seven lap old hards. So Signs could be a bit of a sitting duck here with seven lap old hards. Alonso is going to get punchy. The only driver out on circuit on a set of soft compound tyres. That is interesting. That is interesting. Alonso's out there to cause a bit of carnage, guys, and a bit of drama for us viewers. Um, and I'm all here for it. So yeah, um, not sure when they're going to. 
Not sure when they're going to uh, end up restarting the race. I imagine uh, maybe next lap around or the lap after um, once the pack backs up. Will Hamilton get any points? Potentially. Ah, oh, safety car is in this lap, guys. Safety car is in this lap, so stay tuned. Um, he's only 13th, so with the safety car bunching everyone up, there is potential for him, even though he's complaining quite heavily about his car. So... Red Bull double stacking under two seconds of beauty. Yeah, yeah. Right, guys, if you are just joining the stream, we have over 4,000 of you in here once again. Thank you very much. If you're liking the stream, hit the like button, please. It really helps push this stream and this channel into new viewership and build this great community we have here. And if you haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? What are you doing? Hit that subscribe button, please, guys. And thank you for all the subs that have been flying in. I have seen them. There's too many to keep an eye out on. So, uh, yeah, thank you. We hit 20,000 subs yesterday. We are on 20,166 as it currently stands. As I've just refreshed my uh, stream. So if we could get that to, I don't know, 20,500? 20, 21,000? Surely there's a... Hang on. So McLaren think everyone will tr everyone on the hard tire will try and get to the end on this tire as Max Verstappen backs up the pack here as the safety car is coming in. Um, apart from Fernando Alonso, Danny Ricciardo is going to have to pit again, I think. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe, maybe if they think um, it is going to be uh, Danny Ricciardo um, pitting onto a fresh new set of tires at the end of the race might do him some benefit. But right here we go, Max Verstappen backing up the pack. When is he going to go? He's going to wait until latest as possible i reckon to go as they head around turn 14 or maybe he'll punch it out of turn 14 and try and get a good exit out of turn 16 and that's exactly what he's done max has gone out of the slow turn 14 corner and we are racing again guys green flag here we go and max great great exit for him as he's already putting away from lando norris down into t1 but how is it close behind? We can see Lando Norris there. Uh, apologies, the track map seems to be slightly delayed. Keep an eye out on your timing screens there um, as we can see that Lando Norris is one over. Already lost the DRS of of uh, Sebastian. Sebastian. Why am I saying Sebastian Vettel? I keep, I keep thinking Sebastian Vettel's in this race. He's not. It's Max Verstappen. Uh, Lando Norris in P2. Leclerc P3. So, uh, Perez P4. Signs unable to capitalize on getting up behind Sergio Perez, but he is on older tyres. Um, Alonso not able to make those brand new set of softs uh, work at this moment in time. He hasn't been able to gain any positions off of the race start, so that hasn't necessarily worked for him, that strategy. As Yuki Tsunoda has an issue. What has happened with Yuki Tsunoda? We could have another safety car again as there is a yellow flag. He is trundling along and is he... Oh no, Yuki has come to a stop. What has happened with that V-Carb car? Is it contact that has been made on the safety car racer? Magnussen is also going very slow. So I think there has been contact with Yuki Tsunoda and Magnussen um, on the restart of this race. I am waiting to see what has happened on the TV coverage. Um, of course, that is the uh, what can happen when there is a safety car restart and these cars bunch up. Or is it a case of, and there is another safety car. We got one lap. And there is another safety car as Yuki Tsunoda has come to a stop on the circuit just out of turn six. What has happened? I'm waiting for the TV coverage to catch up to see how this... Oh, Yuki just gets turned by Magnussen. What was Magnussen doing? And he's got a rear right puncture. The right rear suspension's gone. You can see it in the back of the rear view. And wow... Yuki Tsunoda just gets turned by Kevin Magnussen. I don't know what Magnussen was doing there. I think he just got caught out by the Constantina effect as they headed down into turn six. And um, yeah, Magnussen turns Yuki around. And I think Magnussen's got probably a puncture. Um, he does indeed. And that's why he's trundling back round to the pit lane. But um, Yuki Tsunoda is only just slightly pulled off of the circuit, which is why he is... <clears throat> which is why he is um where he is I'm watching a replay no it's Lance Stroll hang on no is it Lance Stroll or was it Magnussen Lance Stroll hit Ricardo Lance Stroll went straight into the back of Danny Ricardo 
But I think that was in response to what... It was just a massive Constantina effect. There was a massive Constantina effect down into turn six. I'm still trying to find out who was at fault. <coughs> Who's misjudged it first, though? So, Fernando Alonso. Oh, my God. So, Fernando Alonso. Wait until you see this TV coverage. So, hang on. But then where happened with Yuki... Uh, so Magnussen is clearly at fault. Magnussen is clearly at fault to Yuki Tsunoda. Very, very poor, very poor mistake there from Kevin Magnussen. Nothing Yuki could do. And unfortunately, that has ruined Yuki's race and put him out of this race. So, sorry, there is another review. I was just watching to see what happened. So down into um, turn six, um, before that incident... Um, there was a massive Constantina effect that happened. Um, so Alonso just misjudged signs, locked up, and everyone then closed up behind. Danny Ricardo, when I say centimetres, millimetres from hitting the back of Oscar Piastri's car, he was, and Lance Stroll just went straight into the back of Danny Ricardo. So Danny Ricardo has most definitely taken a whack on the back of his car. It is intact, but we'll see how much of a performance uh, dampener that has been on his car. Um, Lance Stroll has understandably had to take a... Um, Lance Stroll has understandably had to take a, uh, a, pit, a pit stop for a new front wing. But that has massively benefited Lewis Hamilton, who is now up into 11th place. Only one position outside of the, um, of the points positions now, guys, after starting 18th. Not bad. We got drama, guys. We got drama. That's what we wanted in this race. If Max Verstappen is going to breeze off into the distance, we need it to be provided elsewhere. Stroll to overtake the safety car. That's the only race out there at the moment, yeah. <laughs> How is Danny Ricciardo not pitting? Because he can't. There's nothing that they can do to the rear end of the car. There's nothing that they can do to fix that. Um, but I am he won't pit now because he'll lose too many positions. He missed his opportunity. Um, so, yeah. Um, it was just a mis misjudgment, Walton, to be honest with you. I need to see it again. I've only seen it once. I need to see he's on board again to see could he have reacted better to it. Um, it was a massive checkup from all drivers. Massive checkup. Uh, you'll see. You'll see how. Um, you'll see how close Danny Ricardo was from hitting Oscar Piastri in front, um, and it was kind of caused by Fernando Alonso. So we have a green sector. Why did it say sector eighteen? Yeah, but that's not. Is that Yuki's where Yuki went off at? Don't know. Don't know. Ooh, right. I'm so glad I switched to his stream before the race started. The other guy was poor. <laughs> welcome, Nilo. Welcome. Yeah, welcome, everyone. If you could hit the like button, let's get this to a thousand likes. Come on. Let's get this to a thousand likes. We are only just over halfway through this race, believe it or not, and we've just had our second safety car in as many laps. Um, we hit 20,000 subs yesterday, so much appreciated. If you could hit the subscribe button, we'll be back, of course, for the next race, which I think is Miami in a few weeks. Is that right? Is it Miami in a few weeks' time? Um, but they head to. Um, but yeah, we are in for an interesting race now to the end of... Uh, yeah, to the end. Uh, Magnussen incident is being investigated, causing a collision. That's a slam dunk penalty for Kevin Magnussen, if you ask me. Uh, poorly executed move, which unfortunately has resulted in Yuki Tsunoda ending up out of this race. Um, but yeah, if you could... Uh, what, how many subscribers are we on now? Let's have a look. Um, 
while we still have the safety car. Lance Stroll still just trying to catch up to the back of the safety car. Don't think you're going to catch that anytime soon, buddy. Over uh, 20,216. Much appreciated. Over 200 subs this stream alone. And over 4,000 viewers once again. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you for returning, as always. But let's have a little rundown of the grid after that carnage on the safety car restart. We have Max Verstappen in P1. Lando Norris in P2, Charles Leclerc P3, Perez fourth, Fernando Alonso up into fifth position now, uh, Carlos Sainz in sixth, George Russell in seventh, Piastri in eighth, Danny Ricciardo lucky to still be in this race after that contact from behind from Lance Stroll in P9, Nico Hülkenberg in tenth, Lewis Hamilton up seven positions now, massive beneficiary of that carnage at the safety car restart is now up into 11th. Uh, just watching this on board again of Lance Stroll. Mm, I still, I'm looking at that. I think, I don't know. Don't know if Lance, it looked like Lance Stroll had a lot more of an opportunity to slow down there than the other drivers did. They were a lot closer. Lance Stroll had, yeah, I don't know. I still need to see it one more time. Still need to see it one more time, guys. Um, but yeah, uh, Danny Ricard, uh, Hamilton in 11th, Ocon 12th, Albon 13th, Sargent up six positions into 14th, directly behind his teammate. On merit, guys, on merit, that is, for you Sargent fans out there. I know there's not many of you, but um, there are some. Uh, Guan Yuzhou in 15th, Gasly in 16th, Magnussen 17th, and Lance Stroll, after making contact with Danny Ricardo and taking a new front wing, um, was going quite nicely in this race. It's just... Um, it just kind of thrown it all away and is now dead last of the runners. So I think maybe one more lap and then we will be underway. Uh, I don't think they Will they wait for Lance Stroll to get to the back? Um, I don't know. Maybe he'll get there this lap and they'll bring the safety car in. But <clears throat> Lonzo's on completely the wrong tyres. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I'm surprised he's on the soft compound here. Safety car in this lap, in this lap. So we will go racing again very, very shortly, guys. Very, very shortly. So stay tuned. Stay tuned. But I Danny couldn't repair his rear end. I still think he could have pit for tyres. Um, but yeah, but they'd left it too late. He should have pitted before when the safety car was getting called out last time around. Because um, you pit now with the field bunched up. He's going to the back of the grid. <clears throat> and he's not going to make up that many positions on pace alone. So, Whereas now, even on a set of mediums, he's... Um, He's got track position, so. <coughs> good day, Rob. Good day. 100% I do. 100% I do think Piastri has potential to win a race and um, just needs to improve on his tyre management, though. That's what's letting him down at the moment. Uh, the races where tyre deg is quite high, um, he is quite considerably behind Lando in race pace. Uh, over a single lap, of course, he has it, but... It's an area that he dramatically needs to improve um, if he wants to have an opportunity to be that number one driver in the team and, of course, uh, consistently fight for podiums and race wins. Uh, but, yeah, I I'm a big fan of Piastri. And a um, little bit of insight, guys. I've crashed into Piastri. Or actually, he crashed into me in an F3 race on iRacing. That's my claim to fame. <laughs> but here we go, guys. Safety car coming in. We are... About to have our seven second safety car restart. Let's see if they've all learned from the last time around with that Constantina effect. Um, really, the main reason that there was a safety car in the first place was not because of that contact by Lance Stroll and Danny Ricciardo. It was because of, of Kevin Magnussen. Um, but let's see. Is Max going to go again out of turn 14? Make the use of that traction. And... He is. Max is doing exactly what he did last time around out of the slow hairpin of turn 14. And we are away, guys. Green flag again with 25 laps remaining of this Chinese Grand Prix. The first time we've been here in five years. Max Verstappen is your leader down into turn one from Lando Norris and Charles Leclerc, Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso, Carlos Sainz, George Russell, Piastri, Ricardo, Hulkenberg, Hamilton, Ocon, Albon, Sargent, Zhou, Gasly, Magnussen, Stroll with Sonoda and Bottas, your two retirees in just two laps of one another and there are no overtakes down into the first corner on this safety car restart Verstappen's timed that perfectly once again already over a second ahead of Lando Norris although it does look like he went a little bit deep there into turn six as the gap just dropped straight back down to Lando but you do think that Verstappen does have a considerable pace advantage to put away from that McLaren Charles Leclerc has been um uh 
Charles Leclerc has been a big, uh, been performing really well in this race and has got himself ahead of uh, Perez on merit today. As Hamilton gets past Danny Ricciardo and is now into the points positions for you Hamilton fans. He is up eight positions now into P10. And for what has been a terrible weekend for him thus far, uh, kind of apart from... Well, the race, the qualifying, of course, yesterday um, is getting slightly better. In a car that he is quite considerably and uh, vocally not happy driving. But Danny Ricciardo on 17 old lap medium tyres is getting swamped at the moment, guys. So, yes, not pitting Danny Ricciardo could. He could be falling back through this pack regardless if he pitted anyway. Um, so, yeah, he's just lost another position to Esteban Ocon as Max Verstappen sets the fastest lap of the race, a 38.6 with Norris, a 38.9, and Leclerc, a 39.5 with Perez close behind as well. Norris pulling away from Charles Leclerc here and actually kind of staying with Lando Norris. DRS will now be activated, um, no longer have to wait for the two laps. Launched um, for it to be activated anymore, only the single lap. Uh, FIA stewards turn 14 incident between Stroll and Ricardo is under investigation. Interested to see what the stewards' um, results of that. They'll have all the data. They will have all of the camera footage um, to be able to determine whether or not Lance Stroll could have reacted in time and avoided that incident. Uh, but Lando in P2, 1.3 seconds behind Verstappen now. Leclerc. Just struggling to get away from Perez in the early stages of this safety car restart. But we do have one lap, full clean lap completed under the safety car restart, unlike last time around, guys. Woo! Woo! <coughs> Pardon me. Time? Oh, no. Logan Sargent. Why? Why do you do it to yourself, bruv? Why do you do it to yourself? 10 second time penalty for a safety car infringement for Logan Sargent. He just throws away any decent work that he does for himself. Wow. Safety car infringement. I wonder what that safety car infringement is for. Um, but yeah, wow. Uh, Danny Ricardo is... They need to pit him. Danny Ricardo is going slow. Danny Ricardo is going slow. Have they got to retire the car? 10... Um, Ricardo got no rear end on exits. And Lance Stroll, <clears throat> the stewards deemed he is at fault for causing that collision as he has a 10-second time penalty. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Um, Lance Stroll could have avoided that. I did think, actually... I still would like to see it again. But I do think... Uh, and the 10 set Oh, they're all coming out. The stewards are dishing out penalties like hot dinners. <laughs> 10-second <laughs> time penalty for um, Kevin Magnussen as well. Rightfully deserved. But Lance Stroll, I did think, um, could he have reacted that he wasn't as close behind the cars in front as uh, Danny Ricciardo was or, or, or the Astri uh, ahead um, of uh, Sainz or Alonso or whatever. Um, so, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, wow. Uh, <clears throat> not really going to affect this race because Lance Stroll is down in 17th and Magnussen in 16th. Anyway, Danny Ricciardo is in the pit lane. Are they retiring that car of Danny Ricciardo after that contact from Lance Stroll? I think they may be. He's been in the pit lane for quite some time. And I think that's why he's reporting he had no rear end is because that damage from Lance Stroll is too severe. And this is going to be a terrible day for the V-Carb team as uh, Sonoda and Ricciardo, through no fault of their own, <clears throat> on the same safety car restart lap are going to be out of this race that is that is terrible because Sonoda and Ricardo are actually going quite well in this race and uh, and hopefully people don't see that as um as a poor showing by Daniel Ricardo this weekend because it has been a good performance by Danny Ricardo this weekend and comfortably out uh, performs Yuki Tsunoda. So up ahead, we have Verstappen now 1.9 seconds ahead of Lando Norris, but Lando quite considerably faster than those behind him. He's not fast enough to catch or stay with Max, but he is faster than Leclerc, half a second quicker than Leclerc and Perez last time around. Fernando Alonso on this set of soft compound tyres, who no doubt will most likely have to pit before this race is over and done with again. He's not able to make those soft compound tyres work and get ahead of those ahead. Carlos Sainz in P6 at the moment. Seventh, he has got a six-lap old hard compound tyre compared to that of Russell and Piastri behind. 
Hamilton, where is Hamilton? He's chasing down Nico Uckenberg in P9 at the moment. And there is confirmation, guys, that Danny Ricardo has retired from this race. <coughs> Uh, there is no rain up there. Uh, there is no rain. There is no rain. It was only 10%. <clears throat> some good racing between... Um, there was some good racing between Magnussen and Lance Stroll, by the way. Wow, they went side by side for God knows how long. All for 16th place. Great racing between those two. Um, but they've both got 10-second time penalties. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> Apologies. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> I had a frog stuck in my throat, as they say. Uh, right, so Hamilton closing down on Nico Hulkenberg there. Perez still not able to get past the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc as a despondent Danny Ricciardo is shown exiting his car in his pit box. Um, real shame for the V-Car team and for Yuki Tsunoda and Danny Ricciardo fans as they were going quite well. <clears throat> So, Charles Leclerc still able to hold off Perez Alonso. Maybe just using Perez to tag himself along, stay within that DRS as best as he can to gain an advantage on Carlos Sainz and George Russell behind. But Hamilton all over the back. And Lance Stroll is coming into the pit lane. Are they retiring Lance Stroll or are they putting him just onto another set of tyres? We will see. He has a 10-second time penalty, of course. His race is over and done with. Are they going to pull a fib? And just say there's an issue with the car. Of course, you cannot arbitrarily retire the car, guys. Uh, otherwise, you will get a penalty like Fernando Alonso did in the sprint race on Saturday. Uh, but Logan Sargent, with a 10-second time penalty himself for a safety car infringement, is holding off Gasly and Joe at the moment. Um, Hamilton chasing down Nico Hulkenberg. And it does seem to be, if Hamilton can get past Nico Hulkenberg, he might be able to catch Oscar Piastri, who is only a couple of seconds up the road. But Verstappen, 2.8 seconds ahead of Norris now. Leclerc, well, he's pulled away. Those two have pulled away from Fernando Alonso. I think already those soft compound tyres are going to fall off. We'll see if Alonso is going to be coming into the pit lane. It can't be long, surely. Otherwise, his race is definitely going to be ruined by staying out on those softs. Uh, Lance Stroll did come back out and um, served a 10-second time penalty. Uh, he's now on a set of hards to take him to the end of this race, so he isn't retiring. Um, he should just retire, though, Dawn. I, I agree. He should just leave that seat, to be honest with you, because imagine what that Aston Martin team could do if they had a second driver with the capabilities of anywhere close to Fernando Alonso. Um, they would be gaining considerably more points and uh, potential podium positions. Hey, Emily, good to see you. Uh, Verstappen's only used Haas, doesn't he need to use another compound before the end of the race? Uh, sorry, this is because of um, this here, because of the chat. Um, you can see here that he's actually used a set of medium compounds already. I'll leave that hanging out there and just move the chat over slightly so that you can see. Uh, no, he has used a set of mediums. Um, he has, everyone's done at least two stops. So everyone started uh, predominantly on a set of medium compound tires um, and then pitted kind of early and then the safety car came out. So uh, unbelievable, man. I'm such a joke. <laughs> um, what are you doing? How is a Haas outpacing you? Yeah, well, it's difficult to overtake. Hulkenberg's been pretty good here. Um, he does have two lap younger tyres, Nico Hulkenberg. Lewis not happy with the car this weekend, or quite evidently in this race. He's been very vocal. So, being Max could serve his hard tyres, hence why the gap is not opening up. Well, this is the thing. So, he could win. Max could win by 20 seconds if he wanted to, 30 seconds. However, the more you push the car, the more stress you put, put on it, and the more probability there is of mechanical failures we've seen one already this season from the red bull car they only have a certain amount of engines to use this year as well before they get grid penalties so when he's in the lead by as by as much as he is the team probably get him to turn or they turn down the engine so he's not exerting as much power so yeah um you don't it's all about management when you're out in front especially when you know you've got the pace you're comfortable you don't want to take the tires out because there is always a potential there is always potential as well, but there could be another safety car before this race is over and done with. And he needs to ensure that he's got enough grip in those tyres come the end, uh, come another safety car restart. Um, so there's all those variables uh, that you need to take into consideration when uh, you are out leading in front and you are you have such a significant pace advantage um, because he could be leading by one and a half seconds 
but then that could be nullified and he could have no tyres remaining. Lando Norris has fresher tyres, as an example, and then he um, loses that commanding lead and nailed on race win, but um, but was but was on the cards. Uh, but that's the nature of F1. So yeah, um, he'll he'll finish probably ten seconds ahead, but come the end of this race because of just how supreme that package is. Uh, but Lando doing a great job, by the way, comfortably the second fastest car out there on circuit. Charles Leclerc doing a 40.0 as well as Perez, who cannot get past him at the moment at this stage of the race. Um, Norris seven temps quicker than Leclerc and Perez last time around, as Perez does seem to be closing the gap there with the DRS open down into turn 14. Is this where Perez is going to see an opportunity to make a move now? And... Got very, very close. Got very close under the break in there. Is he going to have an opportunity out of turn 16? DRS activated down the start, finish straight again. You can see that indicated on the timing tower. It is highlighted, both the interval and that DRS indicator. Is he going to sweep round the outside? Oh, he's going for it. Sergio Perez is going for it. They're side by side through turns two. Are they going to go? Are they going to make contact? Leclerc. Has he held on to the position through turn three? He has side by side all the way through turns one, two, and three. Leclerc was able to hold on to that position, but it's not over yet as they head into the sharp turning braking zone of turn six, where we've seen overtakes here already by Sergio Perez, and he's got it done. But Charles Leclerc, is he going to come back at him under traction with the under and over? And he hasn't. Sergio Perez has got ahead of Charles Leclerc. What a great bit of racing from Sergio Perez. He doesn't always get the credit he deserves. But that was great racing from those two. Side by side through all the way from turns one to turn six and seven. And now Sergio Perez will be looking at the back of Lando Norris. But can he respond to the pace that Lando Norris has been setting over the previous laps since the safety car restart? But that was great racing between the Red Bull and the Ferrari driver. And, well, if they are taking these tyres to the end of the race, Declare might just miss out on a podium position here. But he is coming back at Sergio as they head down into turn 14. How much has that taken out of their tyres as they went through? The TV coverage completely missed them going side by side through turns 1, 2, 3 and 4. And then we saw the move from Perez do the overtake through turn six. Uh, great racing from those two, um, but poor D TV direction, if you ask me. Uh, but Leclerc still within the DRS of of Sergio Perez, but Sergio, a 39-4 last time around, even going side by side through Leclerc uh, through, turn, through that first sector. Um, so Sergio, I think, does have the pace to respond to Lando Norris, and we could potentially get a uh, fight for P2 and P3, which could in turn bring Leclerc into this fight also that's kind of what he needs to just focus on now I think Leclerc is can he bring himself into this race uh, potentially for a P2 we'll see over the next couple of laps how those lap times are between Lando Norris and Sergio Perez so let's have a little bit of look further down the grid guys Fernando Alonso everyone is plan D we still believe um, is what uh, they are reporting at Ferrari. Uh, Russell over the back of Carlos Sainz here. Hamilton still over the back of Hamilton uh, of Hulkenberg as Oscar Piastri is suffering. Unfortunately, guys, for you Oscar fans out there, he is suffering um, in this race, it seems, with the tyre management. 41-4 last time around compared to Russell. You can see there with a 40.0. Those guys ahead of him, especially his teammate, a 39.5 compared to Piastri. A 41.5. This is definitely his Achilles heel at the moment, Oscar Piastri. As Hamilton, if he's able to get past Nico Hulkenberg, you would think might be able to catch Oscar. But he just cannot gain on the straight line speed that the Haas has. Um, the Haas is known for being quite fast in a straight line this season. But under breaking, he's definitely given it a go as he goes behind Nico Hulkenberg's uh, marker there. And with the track map, Freezing at the most inconvenient time. Hamilton was not able to make that move stick, but he does have DRS open as he had. Oh, Oscar Piastri has a severe amount of damage. Oscar Piastri has significant damage. So I take it back, guys. He is actually 
um, suffering with damage, and that is why he is not able to match the lap times. But his teammate is setting all those up ahead of him. So, yes, if Hamilton is able to get past Hulkenberg with a little bit of cleaner air, um, you think he'd be able to get past Piastri. But, as we said, as we've seen showcased by Magnussen already this season, um, that Haas is difficult to overtake. It has good straight line speed. And, um, yeah, that is... That is um, a, a great decision by the Haas team to really focus on that this year. As Hamilton did try to go around the outside of Nico Hülkenberg um, through that hairpin, but wasn't able. Oh, and he's got past Hamilton while watching that replay on the TV coverage. Has got past Nico Hülkenberg into turn nine, and for after looking at the rear wing of that Haas car for the last six or seven laps, he has finally got past him, and we'll see if he's able to defend it now as they head down into turn 14. We do know, of course, that Hülkenberg is quick in a straight line with that DRS assistance. Is he able to regain that position on Hamilton as they head down into to turn 14 Hamilton will probably have to go defensive here and do what Hulkenberg had done over the previous laps and no Hulkenberg just sits pretty nicely behind Hamilton and covers that last points position in P10 whereas Hamilton is now up nine positions into P9 and we'll be looking at chasing down Piastri and if he takes Piastri which I assume he will with 15 laps remaining he will be only one position behind his teammate after starting 18th not a bad drive for uh, a very poor car, Lewis. Not a bad drive. Russell must think, hang on a second. Why am I looking at a Mercedes badge in my rear view mirror? <laughs> um, science needs to overtake. Uh, science isn't overtaking Leclerc. No, no. No, so if you're just joining us, guys, welcome, welcome, 5,500 viewers in here. Keep hitting that subscribe button, guys, please. If you can hit the like button. How have we got 5,500 of you in here and only 600 likes? Come on. You can just thumbs up. Just It's a token of your appreciation. Um, it really does go a long way um, to helping this channel and uh, the YouTube algorithm, trust me. Engagement is, is key on YouTube uh, for any of you budding YouTubers out there. Um, but yes... Um, if you're just joining us, Bottas basically had an engine failure which brought out a first safety car. Uh, and then upon that safety car restart, there was a Constantina effect, a severe one, down into turn six, where um, Lance Stroll just basically rear-ended Danny Ricciardo. No fault of his own, nothing he could do. That also, in turn, gave Oscar Piastri some damage as well. Um, Sonoda... In that same kind of sequence, because Ricardo was quite um, was a few positions up ahead, got sent down the inside by Kevin Magnussen, a poorly executed move, and it broke Tsuki Sonoda's rear suspension. Brought out another safety car restart, and unfortunately, while Danny Ricardo did try to give it a go, just had too much damage on the rear of his car, and they've had to both retire the V-carb uh, cars. Real shame because both of them were having a good race. Um, Yuki was on a bit more of a recovery race. Danny Ricardo had, has had a great weekend overall. And hopefully, yeah, um, people don't look at the... People don't doubt Danny Ricardo after this weekend because him being in 18th there is no reflection on his performance this weekend. It was kind of Danny Ricardo of old, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, positive to see. Positive to see. I'm Rick. Thank you for joining the pit crew, buddy. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. And all those subs flying in, much thank you very much as well. Um, wow, just after asking for some likes. See, you ask you ask, and you don't. If you don't ask, you don't get, guys. We've got 835 likes now. It jumped up 200 and just like that. Just like that. And um, we are now on how many subs? Um, as Hamilton is still chasing down Oscar Piastri. We'll keep an eye on those lap times. 20,324. I've got... Wow, nearly 300 subs this stream already, and they still are flying in. So much appreciated, guys. I'll give you a million dollars if show gets first. If I had the power to do that, Eason, I would most happily take that offer. But unfortunately, my powers are very limited. <laughs> um, but yes, let's have a look and a rundown through this grid now as we have 13 laps remaining. Verstappen is your leader, eight seconds from Lando Norris, even with those safety car restarts, Verstappen has just been in control. As Alonso now comes into the pit lane off of those soft compound tyres, how racy is Fernando Alonso going to be? This is terrible for Aston Martin. What have they done? Putting Fernando Alonso on a set of softs, he's falling. He's going to lose. Going to fall back behind Albon. 
Oh, what an absolute shocker from the... I mean, how many positions is he truly and how much pace advantage is he truly going to have in the 13 laps remaining to make up um, that time? That's promoted Lewis Hamilton up an extra position into P8. And Lewis could, if he chases down Oscar Piastri, um, will uh, we'll be able to uh, finish in P7 after uh, starting 18th. And um, a, a lot of it is kind of due to fortune rather than it is actual race pace. Um, but still, you have to take the luck where it is presented to you. But yes, after that pit stop from Alonso, Lando Norris is in P2, 8.3 uh, seconds ahead from Max Verstappen. He is comfortably um, in P2 at the moment. But Perez is chipping away at that lead that Norris currently has um, ahead of him at the moment. So it could be a potential here. For a last um, Perez catching him at the end of this race. So stay tuned for that. Charles Leclerc also 1.7 seconds behind Sergio Perez. Um, we'll see if he's um, able to tag along with those and maybe capitalize on a potential fight between Lando and Perez at the end of this race. Um, although Lando did respond quite nicely there with a 39-4, three attempts faster last time around to Sergio Perez's 39-7. Carlos Sainz up in P5, lapping in 140s at the moment. Um, that is because he's on... Uh, five lap old harder tyres really than those ahead of him. George Russell in P6 um, in on the hard compound tyre as well, trying to chase down signs for what well, he has been since the safety car restart and been unable to get past him at the moment. Hamilton chasing down Piastri, who has significant damage, guys, um, if you're just joining us from that safety car incident with that Constantina effect, which uh, demoted Lance Stroll to the back of the pack and gave him a penalty and damage. Um, so Hamilton, uh, 140.9 last time around. Even with a significantly damaged car, Piastri is lapping around similar times to Lewis Hamilton. But uh, we'll see if Lewis is able to get in his rearview mirrors and put a bit of pressure under the uh, on the young Australian. Uh, then we have Nico Hulkenberg going well in P9. Esteban Ocon, Esti Bestie, in a very shocking Alpine car, is doing wonders at the moment. He is in a points place position. What is going on there? That's gone under the radar. He could be gaining Alpine's first point of the season. And, um, well, Albon is eyeing uh, up that up instead. But... I don't think that will be the case for either of those drivers because Fernando Alonso is on a brand new set of medium tyres. He's just set purple in the second sector and he is flying. So he will regain those positions and, um, well, yeah, may maybe he will actually get past Piastri. I don't think he'll... Will he catch Russell and Sainz? Don't think so. Uh, we will see. But keep an eye out on Alonso's progress as he's just got past Albon on a brand new set of mediums down into that hairpin. And will probably be sitting the fastest lap of the race as well when he comes to, across the start-finish line. Why is Hamilton not passing Piastri? Because he's not fast enough. <laughs> Sometimes the simple answer is the best answer. As 37-8 uh, from Fernando Alonso there on a brand new set of mediums. Quite comfortably the fastest man out on track at the moment. Yes, Sir Carlos Sainz is on 27 lap old, uh, or 28 lap old uh, hard compound tyres now. He didn't pit under the safety car, uh, whereas others did for a brand new set of hards. So that is a shame for him. Um, otherwise, he probably would be a little bit closer to his teammate. Uh, there's a four lap uh, delta there between Sainz and Leclerc. Do I think Verstappen will win? Some... Uh, maybe. Maybe. Just by the skin of his teeth. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Ken. Uh, Ken. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, they're going well, man. They're going well. Five and a half thousand viewers in here. How have we got not a thousand likes yet? Come on, we're at 919. Hit the, smash the like button to get another thousand like stream and continue to hit that subscribe button as well. We'll be back in two weeks' time for the Miami Grand Prix, which is, an I think it's Miami, I'm going to say it's Miami, uh, which will be another sprint weekend, guys. Uh, so, yeah, we'll be back at a much more reasonable time for myself as well because it'll be an evening race in the UK time rather than these early mornings. Uh, but, yeah, if you're enjoying these, guys, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button because we'll be doing these all throughout the season. I love doing them for you. And uh, it seems to be that you also enjoy them as the numbers um, are reflecting.
Uh, Russell in sixth and Hamilton in eighth. That isn't much of a difference. Exactly, Mika. Exactly. Uh, if he gets past Piastri, he'll be only one position behind his teammates. And uh, I think that will um, that will surprise George Russell a bit. And maybe even, probably even surprise Lewis Hamilton because he's not been a happy bunny today. So let's have a look at those lap times last time around. Piastri, a 41-2 for him and a 41-3 for Lewis Hamilton. So Lewis just... Even with a significantly damaged McLaren, is not able to catch Piastri at the moment um, as Alonso is hunting down Hulkenberg and will no doubt um, catch him this lap uh, with Lewis Hamilton in his target sights very shortly. Come on, Charles. Come on, Charles. Yeah, he is uh, He's slower. He's quite evidently slower than Perez at the moment. And, well, I thought Perez would be able to catch Norris, but Norris has got some good pace in hand, it seems. He's just covering Perez off by about two, one to two attempts per lap. And, um, yeah, Perez can put in a bit of a stonker of a lap, and then Norris just instantly responds. So, yeah, this has been a very well-managed race for Lando Norris today um, after... What well, was a very poor sprint race, wasn't it, yesterday? Um, hat, trying to hold on to that position um, around the outside into turn one of Lewis Hamilton, which ultimately cost him six positions in the end, whereas he probably should have just slotted in behind him. Um, and he would have had the... Most likely would have lost a position, of course, to Verstappen in the end because he's just been the fastest man here this week considerably. But, yeah. As Alonso makes quick work of... Hulkenberg, and well, Hulkenberg still covering that last points position. Um, Alonso on a brand new set of mediums, now hunting down Lewis Hamilton. So I think Alonso here, um, he'll be able to overtake Hamilton and Piastri quite comfortably before the end of this race. He has the grip. Uh, Russell, I don't know. I don't think he will. I don't think he'll catch um, George Russell. He seems to be too far up the road with only nine laps remaining. Um, but yeah, I think... Fernando Alonso here could have been potentially been fighting for a top five if they didn't put him on the soft compound tyre in the middle of this race. Still find that a bit of an odd decision. Um, it didn't really work, but maybe they thought they... I don't know what tyre allocations they had left in this race. Maybe they didn't have a set of hard compound tyres um, to use. That's maybe why they used that soft tyre in the middle stint. Um, and if, if so, that would explain a lot why he was on that tyre, so... Ooh, will Alonso beat Hamilton? Yeah, he will. He will. I mean, he's already on the back of him. Look. Uh, Hamilton is on 26 old lap hard compound tyres. And uh, yeah, it, it's it's the tyre advantage that uh, Max Verstappen had over Lewis in the last lap of Abu Dhabi. Think of it that way. <laughs> he's easily going to catch him. That's how much of a tyre advantage Alonso has right now over Lewis. But Lewis needs to play this smart. Um, he needs to really... I, I don't think he's going to fight it too hard. He needs to kind of use this maybe as an opportunity for Alonso to catch Piastri um, and and tow him, potentially tow himself along so that he can um, unsettle Piastri maybe and capitalise on get, getting within that, that all-important DRS of Oscar Piastri. Ferrari actually indicating that they think Fernando will be close to signs at the end of the race. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but Fernando Alonso really trying to get past Lewis Hamilton there. Not able to do it down into turn one. I imagine he will do on the exit of turn four, though, with that extra grip that he has with those medium tyres. Uh, he will no doubt probably send it here down into turn six. You can see it gaining, 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 gaining. And does he do it on the exit of turn six? Or is Lewis Hamilton going to fight it? No. No, Lewis sensibly leaves the position to Alonso. And, well, look how quickly Alonso will pull away from Hamilton here with that extra traction and grip that he's got, out, especially out of the slower corners. Uh, one million, minus one million social credit for, for score to Joe for getting beaten by Sargent. Yeah, it's not been a great weekend for, 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 uh, for Guan Yu Zhou. Uh, Logan Sargent does have a tense... Um, he does have a 10-second um, time penalty, though, Logan Sargent. So Guan Yu Zhou will beat Sargent come the end of this race because he's right up behind him. Um, but he, of course, wants to give the Chinese crowd something to cheer for. So if, uh, if Zhou on that set of soft compound tyres, I think will make a uh, quick work of Logan Sargent as they head down into Turn 14. As Alonso is already on the back of Oscar Piastri. And, well, Oscar Piastri... If Hamilton wanted to get up close... Oh, he's actually going side by side there. I think that's 
allowed Lewis to close the gap a little bit on Oscar Piastri as he went a little bit wide to allow Fernando Alonso through, maybe. Um, oh, it's still a 1.2 second gap to Lewis Hamilton and Oscar Piastri, and Piastri gets DRS there cleverly after allowing Alonso through, which just give him that extra bit of a toe. Couple of attempts down into turn one. So now Alonso has his sights set on George Russell. There is a, an 11 second gap between him and George Russell. I don't think, oh, does he have enough laps left to catch him? We'll see. Let's see what lap times Alonso can do in clean air. Amin's laugh is the best thing I've seen today. <laughs> what, my laugh? My laugh. <laughs> Lonzo, please make it to P3. He's not making it to P3. He's not making it to P3. Uh, Perez has that covered off 39.9 last time around. Lando uh, just responding to Perez, as we said, 39.7 last time around. But Max Verstappen, do we need to say any more? Do we need to say any more about Max Verstappen, guys? 10 seconds ahead of Lando Norris. He is comfortably three to four attempts managing. Three to four attempts and managing. Um ahead of uh, Lando Norris. Uh, it's incredible how much pace that Red Bull has in his hands. So Lewis Hamilton down into P9 now, of course, after losing that position to Fernando Alonso. Um, let's see if Lewis is going to be able to gain on Piastri here. Um, come on, Lewis. You can get an extra position on Piastri. As much as I do like Piastri, um, there's part of me that wants to see Alonso catch Russell and Hamilton to overtake Piastri so that he only finishes one position behind his teammate after starting 18th. Um, that would be that would be quite funny to see. What happened with Fernando? Why is he free pit stops? Uh, because he um, went on to set of softs in the middle stint when the safety car was there. Uh, I think because he probably didn't have a set of hard compound tyres to use at the end. As Sergeant and Gasly are being investigated for forcing another driver off the track. Another, another incident for um, Gasly and Sergeant. Both of them have been investigated already throughout this race. And uh, Gasly got the off-track violation. So I assume Logan Sargent probably forced Gasly off the circuit. So, uh, yeah, not a great race for Gasly. Going well, Esteban Ocon, though, in comparison. Um, he is trying to be chased down by Albon. But it looks like they're just going to miss out on that top 10 and that last points position with Hulkenberg occupying it at the moment uh, with a 2.2 second lead. There's no tyre advantage for either of those cars behind Hulkenberg. So all we need to do is really bring this home and secure uh, another solid point for Haas, who are massively exceeding my expectations, guys. I didn't expect Haas to be um, as well as they have been at the start of this season. Uh, I thought they were going to struggle again, so fair play to them. Fair play to them. Thank you for all the subs flying in, guys. Much appreciated. If you haven't subbed yet, please do. Um, we will be back here for the rest of the season. The Miami Grand Prix is only in a couple of weeks' time. Of course, I do my sim racing content as well in between that, um, as you can see here. Um, if that's something that you want to get into, I've actually had the fortune of racing Oscar Piastri out on in iRacing and crashed into him. Actually, he crashed into me, um, as well as um, being in the same lobby as Max Verstappen and Lando Norris. Um, who else have I seen on there as well on this grid? No one, but half of the... I've raced against half of the F2 grid. They're all pretty much iRacers as well as F3 as well. So, uh, yeah, no doubt in the very near future, um, I will be able to say that I've raced um, quite a lot of the F1 drivers grid. Um, and also, thank you for getting the stream to over a 1,000 likes for hitting that thumbs up. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Well, racing is a very loose term, Imogen. It's a very loose term. Um, I'm, I was in P3. I made a mistake. And uh, yeah, he was fast approaching. And um, he crashed into me. That's the stance that I'm taking. Some will say I crashed into him. I disagree. <laughs> yeah, I've never actually raced them. Um, I've, I've like raced with them. It's probably more of the apps. <laughs> the app statement um but yeah no there's there's a a bunch of sim racers uh all the youngsters now are sim racers it's great to see and uh yeah i racing is definitely where it's at so um that's that's the, the style of content that i put out there as well as these watch alongs for you <clears throat> i 
Um, oh, what the times in the green is when they're getting um, when they're decreasing. Well, when they are highlighted, like Gasly is now, that um, that is because he is in the DRS, and you can see the DRS indicator turns on, and that means he's got it turned on as he is chasing down Kevin Magnussen here. But he is being invest uh, no no further investigation for forcing another driver off the circuit as well for Gasly and Sergeant. I am surprised they've not penalised anyone for those um, sort of forcing drivers off the circuit this this time around interesting that interesting but as we have four laps remaining of this race guys max verstappen is your leader 12 seconds ahead of lando norris who has comfortably covered off sergio perez here it's been a great drive from him this weekend what we expected to see of lando in the sprint race but it wasn't to be lando is uh, solidifying his p2 and he is only slower than max verstappen up ahead sergio perez in p3 and lando norris for the first time this season where um, all Red Bulls finish a race. Um, of course, Australia being the outlier here. Um, he will subvert that 1-2 run that Red Bull have had this season. Uh, Charles Leclerc in P4 just looks like that his tyres are falling off and doesn't have uh, anything to answer Sergio Perez uh, with slightly younger tyres. Only a couple of laps, but it does make a difference. Um, but that'll be a good P4 and P5 for the Ferrari team if they're able to bring it home. Uh, looks like George Russell just hasn't got anything to respond to Carlos Sainz, even though um, Sainz has, well, six lap older tyres as well than George Russell. Three laps remaining, guys. Three laps remaining. So, Fernando Alonso, is he going to catch George Russell? 39.3, 39.5 last time around. So, he was 1.1 seconds faster than George Russell. And, well, barring a mistake from George Russell, I don't think that is going to be the case. Um, it is a tall order for Fernando Alonso to catch George now. If he was on brand new mediums, uh, completely out of the pit lane, then maybe with uh, seven seconds uh, and three laps remaining. But with 10 laps already completed on those tyres, it is not going to be the case. Lewis still looking at the rear wing of Oscar Piastri. He is so close within the DRS of Oscar, but he just cannot get the traction out of the corners. As you see, that interval time just sneak up as they get on the exit of those slower corners. You'll see here through turn six as well. Seems to be gaining under braking. Then as he gets on the power, it just goes out a little bit. Although we did a much, a much better job there through turn six. So maybe, maybe he'll be able to stay close and sneak within that DRS, which he hasn't been able to do of um, Oscar Piastri since he got past Nico Hülkenberg around uh, six, seven laps ago. This car's used to the fastest if the driver ain't good enough to drive it. Exactly. It's a combination of the two. The best drivers get the best cars, ultimately, and that has always been the case throughout history of F1. Um, but of course, we would like to see the best drivers in the best cars, and I think Perez is a good second driver, but he's not a number one, is he? He's not a Max Verstappen, he's not a Lewis Hamilton, he's not a Fernando Alonso, who you would think would get um, more out of that car alongside Max Verstappen than Sergio does. But he does a job for Red Bull, and uh, while there's been talk about Carlos Sainz moving to Red Bull, if Perez continues to do what he's doing as he has done this season. Um, I don't see why they would want try and upset that apple car of Max Verstappen um, and his camp and, um, yeah, ruin what is currently a winning formula. So, two laps remaining, guys, on the penultimate lap. Max Verstappen will be coming around the start finish line for the last time around uh, very shortly um reporting the track surface is very slippery in sector 16 hmm. why is that why is that is that it's not rain is it are we getting rain at the end of this race surely not surely not it does seem to be just overcast there as it has looked all weekend um, but yeah, guys, if you're just joining us, Ricardo and Sonoda, unfortunately, through no fault of their own, got caught up in incidents and were tagged, uh, Ricardo, by Lance Stroll and Magnussen on uh, Yuki Sonoda and both received irreparable damage to their cars, which is why they are out of the race. Valtteri Bottas had an engine failure, which brought out the first safety car. And um, yeah, Yuki Sonoda and Daniel Ricciardo got caught up in the second, uh, in the first safety car restart, which then brought out a subsequent safety car. But yes, Max Verstappen is on the final lap guys please let me know who is your driver of the day with 5,800 of you 
in this uh, in this uh, session right now in this stream thank you thank you keep continuing to hit the like button and subscribe guys come on let's hit let's get to 20,500 come on there's a hundred surely there's a hundred of you in here who haven't hit that subscribe button surely we'll be back in a couple of weeks time for the next race um which is also a sprint weekend um as Max Verstappen is coming through turn 10 who is your driver of the day let me know let me know in chat, guys, who is your driver of the day. As Lance Stroll has DRS on Logan Sargent here. And importantly, guys, for the first time this season, Max Verstappen is not going to lap a driver. Partly due to the assistance of um, the safety cars that we've had. Um, as Lewis Hamilton has now got in the DRS. Well, we did get in the DRS at Oscar Piastri, but no, when it comes to traction out of the corners just doesn't have it so Max Verstappen is approaching turn 14 for the last time here with Lando Norris 14 seconds behind him coming down the start uh, back down the back straight Max Verstappen around turn 16 as he did in the sprint race very dominant performance he handled everything that was thrown at him two safety car restarts and he is your winner again how often have we said that in the last three years of the Shanghai Grand Shang at the Shanghai Circuit for the Chinese Grand Prix and for, not Fernando Alonso, Lando Norris. Lando Norris in P2, a great drive from Lando. What we expected to see on Saturday in the sprint race, a bit of a redemption arc for him this weekend. Sergio Perez finishing in P3, and that's the first time this week where two Red Bulls have finished. Of course, Australia, they were not able to finish the race. But when they have done, they have finished 1-2. And Norris has got in the way of that. So well done, the McLaren team and Lando Norris. Great performance there. Charles Leclerc in P4. A good performance from him. And Carlos Sainz finishing in P5. George Russell in 6th. Fernando Alonso just running out of steam there at the end. Uh, not able to chase down and get past George Russell. P7 for him. And Oscar Piastri, well done. He was consistently chased by Lewis Hamilton for about the last 10 laps. Uh, but with a significantly damaged car due to um, the Daniel Ricciardo and Lance Stroll incident. Um, has been able to get home in 8th place. Uh, a shame for him because he also got damage in the sprint race as well. Um, so two races this weekend as... George Russell, why is Fernando Alonso? It's a checkered flag. Why is it still reporting that Fernando Alonso's got ahead of Sainz and Russell? That's wrong, surely. That's 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 wrong. Um, but yes, um, Hamilton in P9. Um, I don't know why the track map is still updating itself. Your eyes are not deceiving you. Norris and um, Norris did not finish P1. But uh, before anyone else overtakes anyone else, Hamilton uh, in P9, Hulkenberg in 10th, Ocon 11th, Albon 12th, Guan Yu Zhou, good result in the end, recovering to P13, Gasly 14th, Magnussen 15th, Stroll 16th, Sargent 17th, and then we have Ricardo, Sonoda, and Bottas are your three retirees from this race. And that, guys, is your Chinese Grand Prix. The first time we've been here in five years. It did provide some drama. It is still... While it's, of course, impressive, we say it every single race that Max Verstappen is able to continue these consistent and dominant performances, it is still a shame that we are not getting closer fighting up front. But at least we had two safety cars to spice things up a bit, and it did get spicy. And, um, yeah, it's glad to, I'm glad to see this track back on the circuit. It's a proper race circuit. It's a shame that we didn't have a bit of rain. That would have spiced things up even more. Um, but... I think that was a that was a positive race, guys, and I I did enjoy that. I did enjoy that, and I hope you guys enjoyed the stream too. Over nearly six thousand of you back in here again. The chat's going too fast to keep up with everyone, um, but yeah, big big thank you for all the likes, all the subs, and uh, yeah, we will be returning in uh, two weeks' time, I think it is, for the Miami Grand Prix. Um, but yeah, if you um, if you like that, keep it in the like button and keep it in the subscribe button, guys. It'd be uh, yeah, much appreciated. But, wow. Thanks, Andy. Can you say happy birthday, Max? Uh, my brother's watching it. Uh, yeah, happy birthday, Max. Have a good day, buddy. Hamilton has some damage, right? But it's fine. He's managed to get points. Uh, I, I don't trust what Hamilton says anymore in regards to damage. <laughs> he said he had damage in Suzuka, and it I couldn't see any damage. Um, so I think it's just a bit of an excuse for... He thinks he's got that. I do it in sim racing. When I'm slow, I think I've got damage. But actually, I don't. So, 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, thank you guys. Thank you for tuning in. We will just wait around for um, our post-race discussion, as we always tend to do here. Um, see what the drivers say in their interviews post-race. We'll have another rundown of the grid now, um, as penalties have now been implemented um, for those who had time penalties but didn't take them through pit stops. Um, I don't know why it's indicating Lando Norris is P1 at the moment. That's very odd. Not quite sure why that's happening. Um, but... Hmm. P1, not Lando Norris. Max Verstappen. Not quite sure why, why the timing sheet there is showing Lando Norris is P1. I'm actually just going to close that, guys. And I'm going to... Um, I, I'm going to open it back up. Um, it's still showing Lando Norris won the race. That's not the case. Um, <laughs> that is def that is definitely not the case, guys. Lando Norris did not win this race. He had a great race, but he didn't win it. Um, Max Verstappen won it. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why it's uh, flipped. It, it flipped around there. But let's have one more rundown of this grid, guys. So the finishing grid. Contrary to what is currently showing you, Max Verstappen did finish in P1. Lando Norris finished P2. Perez, P3. Then, from then onwards down, it is correct. We have Leclerc in P4. Carlos Sainz in P5. Thought we'd see fireworks between those two out on track, but it wasn't to be. Leclerc uh, looks like he comfortably had the betterment of Sainz this weekend after having a go at Carlos Sainz um, that he fights him too hard and, um, yeah, just not happy with it said that he needs to just get on with it that guy has got no obligation to be nice to you as you are being kept on at ferrari and he has been politely shown the door or unpolitely shown the door at ferrari george russell in p2 a good result for him uh, taking those hard compound tires 33 laps as the others did ahead of him alonso in p7 aston martin be interested to know what tyres they actually had available to race today. Um, I think they only had one set of hard compound tyres, which they took off very early in this race, which is why they were not able to um, put another set of hards onto Alonso's car during that safety car. That's, that's why they went for the soft compound tyre, because they probably thought that medium is not going to be able to make it to the end of the race. So that was uh, the best result in the end, I think, there for Alonso. Uh, because the safety car kind of spoiled any kind of opportunity for him. Uh, Piastri in P8 with a significantly damaged car due to that incident uh, with the safety car restart of Danny Ricciardo and uh, Lance Stroll. Hamilton in P9, nine positions gained in the points finishes, uh, in, in the finishing in the points. So that was a good race for him in the end, although fortune um, due to fortunate due to gaining those positions from those incidents uh holkerberg in p10 good result again another points finish for haas really exceeding my expectations that's for sure esteban ocon good result best result thus far for alpine in p11 albon in 12th guan yu in 13th who is currently out of the car in front of the chinese fans in tears that is how emotional um, an experience this has been for him gasly in 14th magnuson 15th after receiving that time penalty, rightfully so, for um, wiping out Yuki Tsunoda with a terrible overtake. And Lance Stroll in P16 after he had to pit due to uh, damage that he caused on Daniel Ricciardo, which the stewards deemed to be his fault and issued him a 10-second time penalty also. And then Logan Sargent, who was going quite well after the safety cars, but then got dished out a 10-second time penalty for a safety car infringement. So he finishes last of the runners. Um, Ricardo and Sonoda, we've just discussed, unfortunately, through no fault of their own, were removed from this race. And then Bottas had an engine failure in P20. And there we go. And George, I would love a coffee. I would love a coffee, please. Thank you. <laughs> I need it. I would need it. Thank you. Because Lando passed Max after the checkered flag, yeah. So Lando didn't win. I don't know why it never does this. As soon as they pass the checkered, as soon as they go, as soon as they go over the finish line, they do normally stop the changing of the of the standings. But for some reason, it's um, it's updated it. Uh, damn, another Dutch national anthem. Well, you could pause it, Hype Pro, and play another du play another national anthem while that one's being played. <laughs> um. 
So many Lewis haters in the chat. Lewis is a crybaby. Eh, he's not. Look, all drivers are crybabies. And that is a fact. All drivers are crybabies. How often have we heard Max Verstappen cry, Lando cry, Alonso cry, George Russell, Leclerc, Sainz? Every single driver is a crybaby. They are. I'm a crybaby when I'm sim racing. <laughs> um, love how Norris made a mistake when parking up on the grid now rather than making a mistake during the race. Eggs, well, if you're going to make a mistake, that's the time to make it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it was a great performance from Norris. I'm let's. I tell you what, let's run a poll, guys. Um, and obviously, those of you in chat did suggest uh, a few drivers for driver of the day but let's do a poll because it's always the most efficient way of doing this isn't it max didn't finish third it's just a standings error there you go it's now rectified itself max verstappen p1 norris p2 and perez p3 right who do we think driver of the day um come on who do we think driver of the day? I'm going to say... I think he's done quite well. Um, I'm actually not going to say Lewis Hamilton. I don't think Lewis Hamilton deserves driver of the day because um, he didn't actually race that well. He was very fortunate to gain a lot of positions. Um, there we go. Here are three options for you for driver of the day. Who's going to be your favourite? <laughs> I'm disappointed more of you haven't voted Sergeant. <laughs> uh, thank you, Clifton. Yeah, yeah, I do have a bottle of rum that is probably waiting me. But um, yeah, no, thank, thank you, Jazz. Thank you, everyone who's tuned in for this stream once again. We've still got 1,500 of you here. Uh, much, much appreciated. And yeah, 1,200 likes. Smash the the, P, the PB for likes. Um, nearly 6,000 viewers concurrent again. Um, over 500 subs again this stream. So much thank you, guys. Continuing to grow this awesome community that we have here. Um, and of course, it, as well, if you want to further support me, um, you can become a member for two English pounds, less than a coffee. You can become a member, get a sub badge, some cool emojis, and uh, yeah, continually support the channel. And, and uh, hopefully one day this will be a full-time career for myself. We're, we're edging closer. We're edging closer, that's for sure. Uh, Danny, driver of the day. <laughs> so at the moment, 69% of you are saying Lando Norris, driver of the day. Charles Leclerc, 18%. Sergeant is nearly beating Charles Leclerc for driver of the day. Um, <laughs> Lando Norris, though, I do have to agree with you. I think Lando... Uh, after a poor sprint race, um, it was a, a very well-controlled race here today for him. Um, he got a good start. Didn't really didn't gain any positions at the start, but it was a good start. And then he managed his tyres very well. Um, only did the one stop, as you can see there, on a set of medium tyres on the hards. And uh, yeah, just did brilliantly. Um, did brilliantly. Also, can we just say... Hey Ram, can we also just say Ferrari of old doing one stop races on high deck tracks? We would never have even envisaged that being a possibility last year, year before, like the last three, four years. Now they're doing it with ease. They're doing it with ease. So that team is heading in the right direction. Of course, Carlos Sainz is on his way out of the door. Lewis Hamilton must just be thinking, bring on... I don't want to wish my life away, but can I have a time machine and just skip the next nine months so that I can start in Ferrari? Because um, he's... I think it could be another masterstroke of a move by Lewis Hamilton moving to a team that is on the up. Um, whereas Mercedes, I know George Russell is in P6, but they still don't have the pace. Lewis doesn't have the confidence in that car. Um, he's tinkering around with setups all the time to try and unlock the pace and potential in that car. Um, and um, yeah, it's they're obviously not going to be fighting for wins anytime soon at that Mercedes unless they absolutely nail the new regulations. Um, but I don't think anyone has much faith in them at the moment to turn that around. 
Thank you, Mika. No, my pleasure. My absolute pleasure, guys. Uh, mine is the best F1 live channel. Well, I'm a little bit biased, but I have to agree with you. <laughs> oh, look at this for service. What a nice, frothy coffee. Nice. Is there caramel in there? A little bit of caramel in there. Okay. Oh, lovely. Lovely way to, to end. So soothe the vocal cords, guys. Oh, lovely. That hits the spot. That hits the spot. It's 4 a.m. Time to go to sleep. I do not blame you. I do not blame you. Not much chat occurring in the uh, post cool down room uh, with Lando, Max, and uh, Max, Lando, and Perez. They're actually just looking at the replay of the Constantino effect of Lance Stroll into the back of Danny Ricardo and Magnussen's uh, Magnussen's incident with Sonoda. Not really much comment there, other than a oof with Max Verstappen. Um, but yeah. Max Verstappen extends his lead once again. He's he's secured. Did he get fastest lap? I don't think he did. Fernando Alonso got fastest lap at the end. So not quite maximum points for Max Verstappen this weekend, um, but close enough. Close enough. So thanks, Nilo. Next year, Lewis might do wonders. Yes. So what well, the thing is, so F1 is all about the career game. We've mentioned Fernando Alonso plenty of times as someone who's. Um, Fluffed the career game, shall we say. Uh, leaving McLaren when they were on the up um, twice. <laughs> Can we make a mention of? Uh, leaving Ferrari just as then when they provided Sebastian Vettel a car to fight for a world championship. Of course, they weren't able to convert that. Um, but you would potentially argue that if Alonso was in that car, maybe they were would have been able to. Um, so you need to time your moves right. And I think Lewis, of course, with this being his last move in his career... Everyone doubted his move to from McLaren to Mercedes when it happened. Look how well that worked out. And everyone's doing the same now with Ferrari. Um, but I think, quite evidently, Ferrari, who are still yet to bring upgrades, they they have openly said this weekend that um, they need they are going to be bringing upgrades. I think Imola in um, so I think we go Miami and then Imola, isn't it? they will improve and they do think they'll be able to close that gap slightly on red bull slightly don't think they're going to be close enough to challenge them for wins um but adrian Newey has said that um they are realizing in their development side that they've kind of reached the ceiling with the performance gains in the red bull that is how good it is is that they've kind of hit that ceiling already um right so miami is next in a couple of weeks time the third and fifth of may so we have uh, the sprint shootout on the friday in the evening time we have the sprint race on the saturday and the qualifying i might be unfortunately guys missing the sprint race and the qualifying on the saturday due to a family commitment a family event that i have to go to but i'll be here for the friday for the sprint shootout and most definitely for the race on sunday and then we have another two-week break with uh, Imola. And then we head to Monaco at the end of May. So Miami, Imola, and Monaco is where we go to in the next um, in the next month. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Lando did well compared to the sprint. Yes. Well, Lando... Yeah, Lando... Um, he recovered, he, he re redeemed himself, didn't he? He redeemed himself today with a great performance. Um, that one stop worked an absolute treat for him. He was comfortably, he comfortably covered off Sergio Perez um, with his pace. And yeah, that was a that was a very mature performance from Lando. Of course, yesterday with, with losing that position to Hamilton into, into the first corner, maybe just a bit of, um, you could say lack of experience at the front. Not, a, not an experience he's um, had very often. And rather than hang it around the outside and look, wanting to, to retain that first place after losing it, should have just backed up, should have just lifted off and slotted in behind Lewis um, and so that he was not on the dirty line and ultimately losing six positions, which cost him. Um, but look, you live and you learn. Um, you don't, you only learn from your mistakes at the end of the day. So. Two weeks time, Patriarch. Two weeks time, unfortunately. It's not next week, I think. It's two weeks time, so. New Nui basically just saying they're working on next year's car already. Um Are they able to work on next year's car? Yes, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, probably. Yeah. No Rosanil, I love bringing these to you guys, and I, I it seems to be that you enjoy them as well. I mean, there's still 900 of you in here listening to my waffle. 
Um, so that is uh, <laughs> that is something. So, so much appreciated. Thank you, guys. Hey, Neon. Uh, do I think Hamilton can pull off a Brazil 2021? What, starting from the... Not in this car. No. No way is he pulling... Uh, Verstappen could because he's in the fastest car. Um, not Lewis in this Mercedes. No. I mean, look at what he did today. Yes, he gained nine positions, and there's a reason why he's not driver of the day. And I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan, but that was not overly a great race for Lewis. Um, his team probably got him a few positions under strategy. He benefited from the safety car. He benefited from drivers losing positions with incidents under the safety car. And that's why he was able to get into P9. Um, but overall, not a great driving performance from Lewis today. Um, so, yeah. And I'm a Lewis Hamilton fan. But that's what true fans do. We don't hold our, we don't hold the people that we support or the teams that we support on this, like, uncritical pedestal um, where they're like, devoid of criticism. Basically, they're human. They make mistakes. Not every race is going to be perfect. Um, not every overtake is going to be perfect. They're going to make mistakes. And um, yeah, Lewis made a fundamental mistake yesterday, costing him a poor qualifying position, um, and he's fortunate enough to have incidents ahead of him which he benefited from and finishing the ninth so 2021 was legendary yeah we won't see a season like that for a long time um it's it's a shame really um we should see more seasons like that um but unfortunately with the changing regulations that happen one team always nails it early on dominates everyone and then just as everyone catches up in performance and we get close racing they then change the regulations again because they have to agree regulation changes in like five years in advance and that um otherwise or 10 years in advance otherwise um yeah teams can't prepare for it and stuff so charles will beat signs from now on um i don't think he'll comfortably beat him from now on no i still think i still think leclerc and signs are going to go back and forth and i think I think we saw the first spark in the fire between Leclerc and Sainz that we're going to see this season. I was wondering when it was going to happen. Carlos Sainz, um, he's got no obligation to be nice to Leclerc. He's on his way out the door. You know, like, you also don't know how Leclerc... I know, obviously, they look like mates when they're doing PR stuff, but that's PR. Who knows what the relationship is like behind closed door? Maybe Signs, maybe Leclerc's not nice to Signs, or Signs isn't nice to Leclerc, or maybe Signs feels rubbed up the wrong way that Leclerc's being kept on and he isn't, um, like which he probably rightfully feels like he has, uh, should be. Um, so yeah, we'll. Um, I'm intrigued to see how that's gonna how that's gonna play out in um, the rest of the season. So yeah, so and I, um, Piastri unfortunately picked up damage today. Um, on the safety car restart so for him to hold off Hamilton and finish eighth was a good performance from him also picked up damage in the sprint race I think it was as well so unfortunately for him he's had two races this weekend where he's had a damage affected car um, and not had um, a high performing McLaren so that's why he was not able to be anywhere near his teammate in P2 so yeah which is a shame but um, yeah he'll improve he'll, he'll keep improving what's DOD driver of the day driver of the day not Dungeons and Dragons or whatever it is. <laughs> um, yeah, Charles waked up. Yeah. What happened to Ferrari? They're in a pretty good spot earlier. Um, yeah, so Perez just had the pace on Leclerc. Carlos Sainz. I mean, they gained two positions. They, After being out of position in qualifying, it was always a tall order for them to get ahead of Perez um, and to get ahead of Norris, who since practice has indicated he's got some good pace here uh, in that McLaren. So... Drive to survive will be out cut, cut Charles and Signs. Yeah, I think so. I, I wonder if they'll focus a lot on Hamilton as well because of his move. I mean, you you would think so. I'd love to I really want to see the dynamics of Mercedes this year behind the scenes. I just if you're gonna give us anything, give us the dynamics of Carlo of Carlos Sainz at Ferrari and the Mercedes guys. Just give me a whole season of that. I don't care about Alpine. I don't care about Stake F1. I don't care about Haas. Now Gunther Stein has gone. I don't want to see that with respect. I just want to see 
How is that Russell and Hamilton relationship, Toto Wolf relationship after the Ferrari announcement? And how is the Ferrari relationship as well? Give me a whole season of that. I don't care about Lawrence Stroll and his yacht parties or whatever where he doesn't need a wristband because he's so important and so such a face that everyone knows who Lawrence Stroll is, but Toto Wolf needs one because no one knows who Toto Wolf is. Um, you know? You know what I mean? Like, no one needs to see Lance Stroll struggling again for the eighth season in a row. <laughs> to give us the juicy bits. Do we know what caused that safety? Um, yes. Uh, so it was Fernando Alonso. Yeah, Fernando Alonso um, over-egged it into that corner with... Um, yeah, he overhead the corner, which was Carlos Sainz ahead of him. Um, and that then caused the cars behind to have that Constantino effect. Lance Stroll got a penalty because when you watch it back on highlights, Danny Ricciardo and Oscar Piastri were very close behind Alonso. Danny Ricciardo actually stopped millimetres before Oscar Piastri. But Lance Stroll had about two and a half car lengths between him and Danny Ricardo in front. And he had ample opportunity to slow down uh, before he hit Danny Ricardo, And that's why they've deemed him to have a 10 second time penalty. Um, so I don't know which head, which way his head was head was looking in. He was probably looking into the apex or something. But even so, um, you should see X amount of F1 cars slowing up in front of you, you know? So, is the race actually finished? Yeah, the race is finished. Yeah, this is. I'm just leaving this on because this is showing us the standings for anyone who's who's tuning in. Some people may just be waking up, you lazy bastards, <laughs> um, and and waking up to see see the result. So, Russell above Hamilton again. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I expect to see that for the rest of the season. To be honest with you, uh, Reg, I, I do. Um, I they're obviously prioritising Russell. Um, I think you can see that with kind of some of the comments they're coming out with um, in support of Russell and they're a, bit, a little bit more negative on Hamilton. Um, not outright negative, but not as like positive when Hamilton does something maybe like well. Um, and I think Lewis is just like, I think he's already, he's already done with this season. I think we're going to see Lewis tinker around with setups more throughout this season as well um, and see that trend continue because he's like, well... What's the point of me just trying to finish P5? Like, I, if I can try and tinker around with a setup and unlock something that can potentially get me a podium, uh, then I'm going to try and do that. I've got nothing to lose. It's my last year in a car that cannot win the championship, cannot fight for race wins. So I might as well just play around each race with that setup and try and unlock something um, until he goes to a team and a car that actually can win races and, and fight for podiums. So... Do I think uh, Zhao will get a renewal? Interesting question. Um, I think he will. I think um, Bottas' seat is under threat in that Stake F1 team, um, if anything. And I think, because Guan Yu Zhou brings a lot of money. Yeah, you've just seen the support that he's got in China. We're back at China now for the Chinese Grand Prix. And I think they'll... They'll want his investment in that team, um, the, the to-be Audi team. Um, and if the rumours to be believed, Audi have offered Carlos Sainz quite a substantial um, package, financial package to go to Audi. Um, and that's what Helmut Marco said. And they want, they've, they've talked to him about the second Red Bull seat, which seems a little bit disrespectful to Perez at the same time because he's doing a very good job at the moment. But yeah, I... If Carlos, let's say, let's say hypothetically, Carlos Sainz does go to the new Audi team, the Stake F1 team. I think they'll keep Joe and they'll get rid of Bottas. I think that's what they would do. So, well, Audi was going to bring the money. Yeah, that's exactly it, Enzo. Yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. Money, money, money. Do I think Ricardo leaving Red Bull was the worst decision he ever made? Uh, yes. Yes. Simple answer. Um, F1 needs to relegate Lars. <laughs> I, look, what more is there to say about Lance Stroll? But we don't already know. 
The guy shouldn't be an F1. He's had ample opportunity to prove himself. He's getting outperformed by a man in his 40s. An exceptional man in his 40s, but still a man in his 40s. Who... And he's got a team that is built around him, Lance Stroll. I, imagine someone else in that Aston Martin seat. Imagine. Like, they'd be right up there. Um, Alonso would have the support. Like, they'd be scoring points. Um, it would make it juicier for us as well because they have another car fighting for those. When was the last time Lance Stroll fought for a podium? I, genuinely... That is a genuine question to everyone who's in chat now. When was the last time Lance Stroll fought for a podium? I cannot remember when he did. Uh, Lando did a one-stop, yeah. yeah. Jao is a Nepo baby. Uh, yeah, he's got a lot of financial backing. Yeah. I think Joe, I think when you Joe has done okay i wouldn't say he's done great but what guan yu has done compared to the likes of sergeant to the likes of stroll to the likes of others who have come before him is that he hasn't while also not necessarily ripping ripping it up on the grid he also hasn't like done anything poorly He's ne I don't think he's crashed a car. I think he's crashed a car once under his own steam in like the, the two years, two, three years that he's been in F1 now. The Silverstone incident, of course, is what he's remembered for, but that wasn't even his fault um, in t at all. It was George Russell's. Um, so, like, he goes about his business quite quietly. And I think he is a driver, potentially, but if he's given a car that could score points, I think he would do. I mean, he'll be disappointed with his qualifying performance yesterday after the sprint shootout was great for him. Uh, both cars getting into Q3. You expected more of the same, at least for him to get into Q2 in in the uh, in the sprint race. Um, but he, yeah, I don't know if the team dropped the ball in regards to uh, when he went out on the circuit with the track ramping up uh, in performance. Um, but yeah, he would have been very disappointed to finish uh, or start P16. And uh, look, he gained a couple of positions today, but... Uh, yeah, he doesn't do anything like... But there's other drivers on the grid where you go, like, Sergeant and Stroll shouldn't be there. <laughs> Whereas, Guan Yu Zhou, you're like, yeah, I'm I'm kind of like... I'm neither upset or I'm neither, like, over the moon that he's, like, on the grid, you know? Like, yeah, he does a job and I think he's quite a good addition. There's better drivers out there, maybe, but, yeah, we'll see. Turkey 20... That's the one that came to mind, guys. Turkey. Because he qualified on pole, didn't he? But that's it. I mean, has has he... Yeah, I mean, since, since like, last year, he hasn't fought for any podium, has he? At all. What was his best position? Fifth, maybe? Fifth? 2020 was his last podium, P3. Okay, so we're talking four years ago. <laughs> I felt like 2020 was, like last year no we we're talking four years ago so yeah he's i don't need to waste any more time talking about him to be honest guys i'm sure he's a lovely guy I'm sure he's a lovely guy but in regards to taking up a seat on the f1 grid where they're already limited for spaces anyway and we have a number of like good junior drivers coming through the ranks someone else could take on that someone else could take that on Damn, I know. It goes quick, Pat. It goes, Pat. It goes very quick. Norris did really good in China, though. He did a good sprint, too. Hey, good sprint qualifying. Not a good sprint race. Um, let's get that right, because he ballsed up the start, didn't he? And gave up six positions by trying to hang it around the outside of Hamilton into T1, um, which is just a bit of uh, inexperience, really. He'll, he'll learn from that. But a great performance today, a mature one from him. And I'm going to end, actually, three more votes. Come on, there's three of you. Surely there's three of you who haven't voted. I don't like seeing an odd number, like 497 votes. Surely there's three more of you who can vote in the poll for driver of the day. <laughs> just for my OCD. <laughs> I, I saw you unvote who was that who was that unvoting stop playing around with my OCD and emotions I'm doing it on an odd number before it did I stop it on an odd number damn it 505 votes mm.
at least it's better than like 501 and 503. <laughs> um, 67% of you voted for Lando Norris, Leclerc 24% and Sergeant 7% um, Stroll looks best when it rains we just don't race in it anymore that is true um, right who do I think is going to win the next race uh, it's the Miami Grand Prix so Max Verstappen uh. he won it last time around starting in 9th um, yeah, the only way Max isn't going to win a race is if he has a mechanical failure. Let's be honest. Um, so, yeah, it is it is crazy. It is crazy. You feel the same about on numbers? Yeah. My missus takes the mick out of me for it. But I, on, Ending on a five is much better than it being on an, any other odd number. I don't mind it being on, like, like the volume of my TV, for example, like 25. I don't mind that. Or, like, 35. That's okay. I don't like it being on like for like a one or a three or a seven or a nine. Um, I'm more like round numbers to be honest, like um, like in fives to be honest with you. That's more of like what I am, if not odd numbers. Like the track matters exactly, Gorilla. Exactly. Uh, that's when a lot of stuff on uh, Fernando in the mist there. Yeah, I still think so. I'm going to double check actually. Pirelli were sleep. The social media admin for Pirelli was sleeping this morning. Um, surely. So he. Ah, oh, Spanners. Ah, oh, lovely Spanners. Um, from the Mist Apex podcast. Told told everyone to join my stream. Uh, so thank you, mate. Good to see the support. Um, let's have a look. Oh my god, they still haven't posted any of the graphics. What is what is the Pirelli what is Pirelli doing? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um lots of people not happy with uh, Lance Stroll. I say it again and again and again. Get out of my sport. Wasn't even looking where he was going. Um <laughs> lots of people not happy about him. Uh but yeah, no, I I I thought what what did you rate that? What did you rate that race out of 10, guys? What did you rate, rate, rate that race out of 10? I would say... I'm going to say no more than a 7. I'm going to say a 7. I think it was okay. I think it was, like, good. Rain would have made it much better. The safety cars were interesting. The strategy element, again, kept things interesting. So, well done, Pirelli. Doing really well for that this year. Um... I'm going to give it a 7. I think 7 for me is an okay race. Lower than that, this is how I do my rankings. A 7 is an okay race, uh, like a good race. And then anything lower than that is like you're getting into like the poor range, basically. Six, Warren a 5. Hard man to please, Warren. Hard man to please. <laughs> Do I think Kimmy will take the 2025 Mercedes seat? I think it's edging towards that, yeah. He just did a test, actually, Kimmy Antonelli, in the W12 at Imola. So they are... I mean, you could definitely tell where they're putting all their eggs, um, in which basket they're putting them in. I, I just think it makes sense for them. If they're putting so much into his development, why would you not put him in the team for next year, bed him into the team, into the engineers, how the team operates... Heading into a new regulation set. Bringing in Carlos Sainz for rumours were Carlos Sainz had been offered a, a one plus one year uh, with an option of an extra year. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't see that. I don't see the point of that, really. Um, for Sainz or for Mercedes, if they're putting, so, if you know, like you're just going to get turfed. Sainz is going to find himself in the same position again where he's going to be turfed out for um, for Kimi Antonelli because I think they'll keep Russell as well. So. Agree with the seven imaging. Good, good, good. Yeah, no, I just think I think there was enough there. Of course, look, I don't think any race is going to get above a seven until until we see a fight for the win. Other than Max Verstappen, that's just my. I know people are like, well, we don't need to see fights for the win. Well, you do, you do. Every single driver here wants to win a race. And whether you like it or not, and you try to ignore who's winning races, that's what we do, even if we're in sim racing and stuff. Like, we want to win, and people want to win, and we focus on who is winning the races. 
who is winning the championship. And until we have more of a challenge up front, I don't think any race is going to get higher than a 7 for me. Even Australia was, I'd say, a 7. Because while Max didn't win and we had a bit of drama, obviously with him going out of the race, the race then itself from then on wasn't like... It, it wasn't like racy. We didn't see on track a lot of on track action, which we very rarely do at Australia. Um, but it was, yeah, it, it was a different sort of seven. <clears throat> you should. I should start a podcast like Matt and Tommy. I haven't got the time. No, and I don't want to do a podcast as well. I'm part of a. Um, I am part of a podcast, um, the Missed Apex podcast. Given so, if you want to. Listen to those guys. Let me show you who they are. I've been on the last two race weekends, actually. I've been on the last two race weekends. Oh, I've got my... Um, they're on Spotify. They're on YouTube as well. They do content throughout the course of the year. Um, we are the only podcast that does content in the off-season, pretty much, or consistent stuff. Um, so you can... Do consistent content. So, Missed Apex podcast. Go listen to those. I am not on the podcast today. I've been on the last two weekends, so I'm giving others an opportunity. <laughs> um, and we also do... Uh, it's also stream live on YouTube. You can watch it back on YouTube if you want to. You don't have to. Spotify, um, other podcasting platforms. I'm part of the Missed Apex community. Um, and, yeah, that's really where I'm at. And, I, and I'd rather put my time and effort into doing... Um, yeah, these watch-alongs and stuff. I may do, though... I have been thinking about putting maybe a little bit more time into doing some, like, F1 opinion videos. Because, obviously, you guys seem to like my commentary, seem to like my opinions and stuff, and I like having a bit of back and forth with, with, with people. Um, yeah, I might do, like, just, like, some debrief videos or something, and opinion videos mixed in with the sim racing stuff um, as, a, as, a, as our community here is getting getting larger. So let me, let me know if you think that's a if you would you tune into that? Not necessarily the streams, but like videos, like in the week. Would you would you want some more opinion based F1 content? Is pretty much what I'm asking. So what's happening right now, Arson? Not a lot. Not a lot. I'm just. Gonna... Um, the race is over and done with. Max Verstappen won. So. <laughs> I may, yeah, I may do like a, a Q and A type thing. Get you guys to post questions to me in like my Discord or something, and I answer them. Maybe something like that. I should do it on TikTok instead of YouTube. I do need to post more on TikTok. Yeah, I've noticed that the F1 content on there is is quite big. I, the sim racing stuff isn't as popular anymore on TikTok, so I might do some talking head type stuff on um. On YouTube, uh, on, not on YouTube, uh, on um, TikTok. So, yes, 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 Rob. <laughs> I do think Perez will stay in Red Bull next year if he continues the way he's going. I'm not going to say he will be because we know how Red Bull operate. Uh, he is doing the job that is required of him at the moment. Um, what he was hired to do, be a good number two. Well, today he didn't get a one-two for um, for him. Um, they, unfort yeah, he's, he's finished on the podium every single time this season thus far, uh, every single race, bar in Australia. That's the one time where he's fallen down, where, when Max, that's where he really needs to step up, is when Max, on the very rare occasions he's not in a race, uh, or not able to win, Perez needs to be there in the, in the next best car to, uh, reap up those wins. That's what Red Bull want from him. Um, but yeah, no, I think if he continues this form throughout the rest of the season, they'll keep him on. Um, as long as Max Verstappen is staying where he is, which I think he will do now uh, after all the rumours. Um, if Perez goes, so this will be this will be an interesting one, guys. And I think it will be very telling if they do sign Carlos Sainz Red Bull. And it's a big if. Uh, a replacement of Sergio Perez. I think that's an indication that Max Verstappen is on his way out of Red Bull. Because I just do not see why you would upset that 
that team dynamic the way it is now for bringing in Carlos Sainz, who we know is going to be coming in. There's history between the dads. It's, it's quite well documented that Sainz left the Red Bull kind of um, organization, um, academy, whatever you want to call it, because of the differences between his dad and Joss Verstappen. Um, I don't know why they would upset that apple cart and try and have two number one drivers because Carlos Sainz is not is better than Perez. Let's like I think everyone can agree that he's better than Perez, and he will try and take it to Max. Um, and yeah, I I can just see that that is them eyeing up their next. That is them like prepping their next number one driver, with Max probably looking to get out of Red Bull for the new regulation set. That's what I would take from that. Some people may think it's a reach, but I just don't know why you would. You got a clear number one driver who's much better than his teammate, who is doing a job in a supporting role for him. Why would you try and upset that and bring in another number one driver to upset your? main driver you know that's 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 my kind of thoughts and opinions on it so Perez will leave I guess well Perez won't go anywhere unless he's shoved out the door that's the thing because he's never going to get another top seat like this that's what I've always said is that Perez you're never going to see Perez move under his own for his own decision it will be Red Bull getting rid of him because where's he going to go no other top team is going to take him Ferrari uh Definitely wouldn't, even if there was a space available. Mercedes wouldn't. Aston Martin, maybe. But then again, Alonso's just signed on. We know Lance Stroll's going nowhere while his dad's in charge of the, charge of the team and the owner. So McLaren signed up for years to come with Norris and Piastri with their partnership. So yeah, he's got nowhere to go. He'd go back to a mid, mid-team mid like Bottas. So he's not going to go anywhere unless he is um, pushed, basically. Do I think Miami will deliver? Uh, no. I think the two races we've seen at Miami have been pretty damp squibs. Um, we've not seen good racing there. Um, and I'm not a fan. Not a fan. So, uh, yeah. Maybe you guys think differently. We've got a sprint race. Maybe that will provide a bit more drama um, at a circuit like Miami. But, yeah, I'm just not a fan of Miami circuit. So, I don't think it'll be a good one. To be fair, it was Miami last year when Perez fell off a cliff for a long time. Yeah, and Miami last year was a, was a tough one for Perez because that was one where Verstappen really fell into that win. Now, I say fell into it. All the data, all the data showed that um, the medium compound tyre was the tyre to start on and then you went on to the hard compound tyre. Or the deg or something like that. It was something to do with the deg. Everyone said that... Uh, all the data showed that, yeah, you start on the softer compound um, and you then go on to the hard. I think it was. Yeah, you, you go on to the hard tyre. That was it. Um, but there was very limited data on the hard tyre. So Max started ninth. Perez held his lead, pitted, and Max just kept going because there was no deg on that hard compound tyre at all. So Max took the hard compound tyre I think around 40 laps, around 90% of the race, he took that hard compound tyre, getting quicker and quicker and quicker. It was one of my biggest criticisms of that race was, was the tyres. And he then pitted. And then when he came out of the pits, of course, he came out um, He came out side by side with Sergio, didn't he? Um, something like that. And um, yeah, that, that he just he was very, very fortunate to win that race because all the data showed that... that the hard compound tyre wasn't going to last the whole race distance. And it did for Max, uh, fortunately for him, unfortunately for Perez. Uh, so through no fault of Perez, Perez's own, and Horner and all that came out afterwards and said it, um, that's why he um, he lost that race. And yeah, it was, it was a t I imagine that would have been a tough one to take because you're like, for fuck's sake, like I've done everything right here, everything right. And my teammate who started ninth, where I'm thinking I'm going to capitalise on some good points has ended up winning the race due to kind of an anomaly in the tyres. So, um, Stroll to Red Bull. <laughs> I'd love to see it just for the bants. <laughs> I'm all for it. Fuck it. <laughs> uh, do I think Sergeant will earn a seat for next year? No, I don't think Sergeant has a seat for the second half of this season. 
Imogen. I think Sergeant is... Uh, I think they've already ironed up his replacement. Um, so, yeah. He is on... Uh, well, he's not even on borrowed time. I think his time is gone. And when he will be removed... I think he'll be removed from the summer break. I think it was Red Bull. They probably would have removed him now. But if... Because it's James Vowles and because he's a bit more of a nice guy... Um, they will probably wait till that four-week break, and then they'll replace him. So it depends. It all depends on their financials, I guess. Sergeant brings in a lot of money. Um, he has rich parents. He's American. They have American sponsors. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But I don't think he's there. It's definitely not till the end of the season. That's for sure. So a better junior driver will replace him. Yeah, I don't know who they'll go for. I don't know who they'll go for. People have said Lawson, maybe. I don't know, but Lawson has been confirmed that he's having a seat for next year in Red Bull, but who knows? Red Bull, I don't know. Would you trust what they say? I'm not sure if I would, unless it's in his contract. Unless Lawson has it in his contract on a piece of paper that he is in an F1 car next year, um, then, yeah, he will um, He will be out of that. Actually, that's a good shout, actually. Everyone's talking about Perez. Would you like to see Liam Lawson alongside Max Verstappen? I would, however, only as long as he's not, like, given the treatment of you need to be on pace with Max Verstappen, like, straight away, you know? I think he would get better. So. Another Joe Sayward fan. <laughs> Perez Mr. Mercedes? No. No opportunity. No no reason why Mercedes would take Perez. No reason. So. Uh, Max Verstappen won, Mohamed. Max Verstappen won. But um, yeah, what another stream, guys. What another stream. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for all of you still tuning in to, uh, as I said, listen to my waffle. Um, it's, yeah. I'll, um, I, will, I will do, I'll put some more time aside. I have one more week left of uni. Yes, one more assignment due. One more exam. And I am done. And um, yeah, I'll have some more. F well, I'll still have, obviously, my day job, but... Um, I'll have a bit more like spare time to, to think of some different content ideas and potentially do some yeah opinion based videos, F1 videos, and just see how they got on. I'm um I, I'm I'm um what's the saying? I I am not afraid to just throw shit at a wall and see if it sticks. If you know, like try different ideas. Uh, I know obviously like some people will go, oh, I'm not diverting away because of the algorithm, but sometimes you don't try out different ideas, try different pieces of content. Um, you may miss out on what, what might be a gem. Um, and of course, you guys love these streams. You love the watch alongs. You like the uh, content as well. And uh, yeah, I think we'll give that a go. But I am now going to go. Um, I am. Um, I've drunk a lot of coffee, a lot of water. So yeah, I need a wee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go uh, end this stream. So yeah, thank you guys once again for what has been um, an amazing watch along. Just continue to grow over 5,000 viewers, and uh, yeah, more subs um, to 20,500 over 20,500 subs. Um, so yeah, 500 this stream, over 1,200 likes, yada yada yada. Big thank you once again. Have a lovely rest of your Sunday. We'll be back for the next watch along in two weeks time for the Miami Grand Prix, which is a sprint weekend. Uh, I will be here for the sprint shootout, which will be Friday evening uh, for myself. And then um, the race, uh, sorry, the qualifying and the sprint race on the Saturday. I'm not so sure. I'll have to let you know. Um, I think it clashes with if it was earlier on in the day. Yes, but because it's evening, um, I think it's clashing with a family event, which I am. Um, I do have to prioritize. So, uh, yeah, with 24 weekends this year uh, there was no doubt going to be one or two races that would uh, i might or sessions i wouldn't be able to make but but all importantly i will be here for the race on sunday that is for sure so yeah we'll be back in two weeks time i'll be doing um other sim racing content in the meantime maybe some f1 content as well um let's say if there's some news and stuff that pops up in the two weeks i'll jump on and just put a couple of like talking head videos together you know um and you guys can um, yeah, ask me some questions below, things like that. We'll do a bit of back and forth. And uh, I may even be streaming later on this evening. That's what I might even do for an F1 race on iRacing. So, yeah, have a lovely rest of your Sunday, guys. Rob, thank you, buddy. Pat, Imogen, Jay, Mark. Have a lovely 
rest of your weekend. Have a great couple of weeks. And if I see you in the meantime, I'll see you in the meantime. Thanks, guys. Bye.